What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Kind of Funny Podcast. I'll be your host today, taking you through this metaphysical journey nope. to a place we like to call hope. My name is Nick Scarpino. To my right, the Joester. Hello. How you doing, Joey? I'm good. Joey, no. Joey Noel. Uh, to Joey's right, we have uh, Mr. Maximum Cortez. Hello. Hey, guys. Tell Jono. What, what I Jono? No, that's a thing. Yeah. That's a Tim thing, but like everyone can use it. And joining us for the first time ever on any piece of kind of funny content, Barry Courtney. <laughs> not Barry I don't Courtney think that's true. <laughs> He's never it's definitely <laughs> true on this show, but I've been on KFAF, uh, did a couple of games dailies. We did the Persona 5 spoiler hey, cast. Let's read your yeah. resume, Barry. Let's not. Let's go to Barry. Barry, do you have a website? Do you have BarrettCourtney.com? No, I don't. You should. <laughs> I have BarrettCourtney.org, though. Do you have .org? No, I'm kidding. I'm making oh, fun of you. Fun of me. Uh, <laughs> do still where they have websites for themselves yeah, yeah. They, uh, a lot of oh, comics have websites because they put their tour dates on there yeah so you but can go like, get tickets and in shit there. our realm oh yeah uh, absolutely yeah, to, have, to host like um non boomers yeah yeah because you have to have one place for people to go like you can update easily and i yeah. just feel like there's no no social media outlet does that very well like if you if you think LinkedIn of like tries to do it. i guess you could do a LinkedIn. facebook page like a business page on mm. facebook but you still can't i don't know if you could do all your tour dates there and get you tickets can. and stuff you could do it events within your page mm. and, and people do that as well i see that but they, i just some of the old school guys just like to have like you go to like mark and it's just literally his tour dates <laughs> with ticket links mm. nice it's thing fun. uh the thing of uh pages i found out last week i have an imdb page which is really cool um because i worked on the um i worked oh, on I when ign partnered with disney to do the ign show yeah. on disney xd i'm credited as like a segment producer oh, that's cool for it. and i was just like oh this is weird and cool that's like, a right. step above a te- uh, peruvian street meat yeah it's hey, peruvian hey, street hey, toy I have, street several, toy. <laughs> I have several credits on my imdb all right he does oh my gosh. i'll never forget the first time i i noticed that i had an imdb page i think i think someone had started it at ign when we were mm. doing up at noon uh, we had IG, i was like the i'm i'm listed as the director of the television series IGN originals because <laughs> IMDB doesn't have it didn't at the time have good tools to like list web series or right. like web, mm-hmm. just like one off web videos I don't think it does still. so I'm like I'm a director of all the April Fool's videos from like 20 I want to say like 7 20 two, or 2000 like 20 years ago to like yeah <laughs> I was gonna say, like 20 years ago but like all those ridiculous things and then of course I'm like uh, all this all the kind of funny stuff like the animated series and shit I still have but it's a mess I need to go in there and fix it yeah I know I have one two and I think mine is like the one uncredited voice I did for the animated series, and I think oh, nice. they all Sugar Pine Seven also has all yeah. their stuff on there. Huh. So I'm credited in one of those. It's good to do. I think that people it 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 it, it begs the question of like what makes you legit because right. you can go on and add your own IMDb credits, and like uh, obviously they'll I think they I think they check them stuff. to yeah. double check and make it sure. Cost money. I think you could do IMDb Pro. Yeah. To do that. Um, but you can do it. Mm. And so you could go in and add yourself. And then the question is like, does that, because I always look at IMDb as like being like an authority. on Right. Mm-hmm. You pay to become a pro. I'm pay to but win you can be, yeah. But, but see, it's like, really I'm, just like Wikipedia where anybody can edit it. Yeah, pretty much. But, but I, then I, I think they add fact a check picture it too. of Nick. Yeah. See, there it is. Yeah. You got you to gotta go do the close up uh, picture of him. Oh, God. You mean the, the one, one from the one that he, the, the Snapchat where slat. he became a woman. Oh. Uh, yeah. I left that Four in the Slack as my Slack profile picture and for even one you day, and then I couldn't do it. Yeah. <laughs> God, I was worse. like, I can't do this to myself, let alone you everyone else. Uh, terrible. It was like, <laughs> well because it has trouble with the beard. It has yeah. trouble yeah. taking away your beard. It, yeah, yeah, it's it's really not good. It's like mm-hmm. when it's like when they had to uh, put the fake thing over Captain America's beard in uh, at the end of Avengers. And he had it was his arm, cover wasn't it? It was like gross. Oh yeah, he was like doing kind of the side shot when they're eating shawarma. But they put like a fake face thing over yeah, it. Yeah, it, it just like looks that. gross. Why would you not just Because he was filming for on um, that weird else. train movie. Yeah. Where they're in snow. Uh, Snowpiercer. Dude, Snowpiercer. Snowpiercer. Snowpiercer was awesome. Yeah. Snowpiercer was cool. Yeah. That movie was fucked up. They're going to make it a TV show. They Good. are. Yeah, interesting. Yeah, yeah they should take every movie and make it a TV show. Why Everybody's not? talking about this uh, new fantasy series. Kevin, you might know what it is. I'm listening. But every, uh, like, you know, Game of Thrones was done last night, and I saw a lot of tweets saying, let's do this again in five years for... Blah blah blah. It's you like the five. Blah blah blah. The yeah, five, I saw people clock, posting screenshots. The clock of it. something or the five something. Blah blah blah. It's it's very similar to I guess Game of Thrones or uh, just any really f- any fantasy series. It's kind of like the big novel that's out oh, right that's now. Oh, that's another lot of, thing coming. Yeah, that Amazon bought. Am- Amazon oh, bought the rights. Oh, oh you're talking about uh, the uh, foundation. The one, I, no. No. It, no, I don't think so. I think it was one oh, that Andrea kept talking about. A song and ice of. 
Water and Star wings. Wars. His dark material. Oh, uh, his dark, dark material. No, it's, not, it's not his dark material. No, right. yeah. yeah, that show again. looks cool. How do we feel about that? Because I saw the Golden Compass when they made it into the movie the first time. It was not yeah. good. Yeah, so that's the Golden Compass, yeah? Yeah. Okay. I think. Well, you see I the big polar bear. I, I, squ- I, I typed in his I'm, dark I'm materials in, and, the fir- and, I, and Golden Compass came up, so I yeah. assume that's the first book in the series. Interesting. Gotcha. The Wheel of Time. The oh, Wheel of Time. Adrian yeah, that's, has read this like yeah. a million times. She keeps talking about how much it's like a million times better than Game of Thrones. Yeah. Huh. And Maybe then, it is. But it's also is it, like a million books longer. Is it done? Because <laughs> I, I it's done. <laughs> good. So it's, it's so it's Neil Gaiman, the director. Oh, author. it could be good then. And Neil Game of Thrones. Awesome. Uh, Amazon has last name? also inked deals with the king of contemporary cult fantasy author Neil Gaiman and uh, Game of Thrones writer Brian Cogman to create the series exclusively for Amazon Prime. Is, it's, is it, it not Neil Gaiman? Yeah, it's Neil Gaiman. Whatever. I, I say Gaiman because it, uh, okay. it rhymes with diamond. Because it's another, it's like the, who was the, Should it was like, like Namor and Amor where I'd never heard anybody else say it, so I didn't know how to say it. So yeah, that's fair. So, yeah. I've heard lots of people say it, though. Oh, okay. Uh, how jacked are we for Watchmen? Because really I'm excited. Pretty jacked. Cool. I'm low. I'm very excited. Really? I know, and I, I love Man. the comic. I really, uh, the movie is like the one Zack Snyder movie I like. Um, and then, it, yeah, there's something about this series, and I might just need to read up on it more, like, where is it taking place? How does it connect to like, See, the I don't, overall? I don't want to know anything about that. Huh. huh. I, they got Don Johnson. It, the trailer's trippy as fuck, and this is, I'm yeah. good. It's a cool trailer, but like uh, being interested in the original stuff, I'm like kind of wavy on, like, is this going to be for me? I don't know. The so. trailer gave me a lot of Leftovers vibes. How, right. Like, mm. the, the cult, the the sort of like cult following that starts that, in the that, Leftovers. Yeah, the, the, the Rorschachs. Uh, uh, what cult. are they called? The, rema- the, the remaining or the, I forgot what they're called, but they all wear like the white robes. It, uh-huh. This had a lot of like sort of similar vibes in that trailer. Well, you have mm. to assume these are like devout, the followers of like Rorschach, Rorschach right? Yeah. Because yeah. I'm wondering he died, if it's they must like, have like picked yeah. up that he got fucked over and like, well, he well, sent, because he he's, sent yeah, he sends his journal to That's the, right. Uh, it tells everyone. Um, yeah. So it might be like a following after of all of that stuff uh, happened. So I'll be interested. So there are people in. Like listening to this right now, screaming at their phones. Like, you guys have no fucking idea what you're talking yeah, about. I didn't even know yeah. it was a sequel. I didn't know it was a follow up. I well, thought I, it was just a again. I don't. I, yeah. yeah, it's got to be know, because yeah. more people are dressed as Rorschach and like. Yeah. He oh, it's definitely a sequel. Yeah, yeah. 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 yeah they made that very clear. I tell you what, yeah. HBO did a fantastic job last night with their sizzle reel of like, hey guys, you might want to stay <laughs> with HBO because yeah. check out all this cool shit we have coming. Did you guys, out. Westworld? Uh, Westworld were you, were you jacked three. for that trailer of Westworld. Oh my god, first time, my dude. Let's go, Paul, dude. I I'll tell you this. I saw that trailer and I was like, oh, this looks cool sci-fi. Oh, Aaron Paul, they got him. And I was like, he's looking good. He's aging nicely, like a yeah. fine wine. Mm-hmm. Beautiful. And then at the very, very end, I was like, what is this? This looks cool as fuck, right? And then and then uh, What's Your Butt pulls up. Rachel. Uh, 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 Rachel uh, something Wood. Rachel Evan Rachel, Wood. Evan Rachel yeah. Wood. Evan, Evan Rachel, Rachel Wood. Yeah. yeah. And she pulls up and I was like, oh, this is Westworld season three. Nope. Really? I do not want to do wow, this. Wow, you're so I, wow. fucking, I couldn't get through episode three of Westworld season two. Couldn't get through season it. Season two wasn't as good. I'll it's say bad. that. I, I, mean, it's, yeah. I don't think it's bad. I just don't the think it was The first three good. episodes were so disjointed that I was like, what are you fucking doing? What are you trying to do here? Mm. It's jumping time. It's jumping places. It's like slow I as shit. I definitely think I mean, it was technically so was the first season, one. but we just didn't. But we it, didn't know it. And it was done very well. well we At the people, end of it, you're like, We were putting it together halfway through the season. My problem with Westworld, I haven't watched season two at all, was like at the end of it, all of the twists that happened within like two episodes felt like they should have been spread out a little more over a couple seasons because it's just like, oh, I guess we're here already. So it was, sc- was going to be hard to tell what season two was going to be. I just, um, yeah, sorry, continue. And that, yeah, that's why I never picked up. And like two episodes in, everybody's talking shit about it. So I was like, yeah, I, I probably made the right call of not picking it back up. Yeah. I just love that this is a total like offshoot of what yeah. the originals, what like. I, I agree with like with se- when season one ended, it's like oh you could probably end it there. Yeah. But do we really need more? And we got more, and it was less than great, right? But do you feel like I, this is also the sequel to Ex Machina. I, I I like I love that vibe, dude. I love that like is West that, what is Westworld? Is it, it even of, involved anymore? It yeah. looks like um, what is it? What's this? The movie Twenty Forty Nine. Blade, uh, Blade Runner? Runner. Blade yeah, Runner. it kind of has a Blade Runner feel to the world. And like the like, working class yeah. dude, Aaron mm-hmm. Paul, kind of down his luck. And Marshawn Lynch, former uh, fellow owner, owner of a uh, FCFL football team, is one of the goons that's like with... Uh, Was he on an episode of Brooklyn Nine-Nine? Probably. Oh, Maybe he's, he's a silly I swear dude. to God, I just saw an he's episode. Great. Did he play for New York? 
Who no, he, he played for? for the Seahawks, and then he played for the Oakland Raiders. I swear Raiders. to God, he was on an episode of, of Brooklyn Nine Nine. Just guessed a quick hand. I'm so glad. I'm so happy you're going through that series right. right now. It's the best series ever. Made. I hate that he's not watching <laughs> The Office. <laughs> it's I will. Cool. I will make the argument. There is an argument to be made that um, Brooklyn Nine Nine is more consistent than The Office is. I think. But consistent at like an above mediocre. Yeah, no, no I mean it's great. It's consistently great. like a six point eight to a seven. I don't want to go through this. I don't want to. I don't want to. I don't want to, I don't want to drag the audience through this emotional turmoil out there because I've got. I've gotten a lot of. Uh, a lot of people. A lot of people coming out and saying, Nick, thanks for speaking truth. Uh, to no, this because the office sucks. <laughs> <laughs> no, I just, I just made it back. Emily's yeah. left Nick and Alyssa in the middle of a Taco Bell at like 1 a.m. on Friday night. Oh, yeah. We're talking oh, shit Alyssa about the office. I bonded on that. Oh, Wait, Alyssa God. doesn't like the office? No, she, she doesn't not like the office. She, We both love the office. My proposal was based around the office. Yeah, that's right. But she always, um, she had to come to terms with a couple of years ago. She's like, the office is not nearly as good as Parks and Rec. And oh, I don't know what her stance was on comparing it she to Brooklyn. Brooklyn Nine Nine. Yeah. yeah, that's why I almost yeah. walked out. Yeah. Brooklyn Nine Nine's like too sitcommy for me. No, it's a, like, it's a straight it's, comedy. Yeah. It's just it's too formulaic where like the, where there's a lot of like the ooh awkward like a lot of those like kind of typical jokes yeah. that you've heard a million times. They hit a stride. They hit a stride around right around episode two, yeah. and they never stopped. They never broke with that format. <laughs> yeah. And, and like it's still good. It's in. still good. I enjoyed it. I watched all of it. Yeah. Andre um, Brower is fucking. Perfect in that show, where there's the, at one point he plays oh, uh, yeah. uh, Captain Holt. Yeah, he <laughs> there's one point where he's like, let's uh, he tries to throw him a party because they're on the night shift. I'm, I'm in that season, and he's like, let's uh, let's kick off some some great uh, office conversation. Let's talk about our favorite uh, knots, <laughs> like nautical knots. <laughs> and he's like, bowline, and he just starts listing knots. <laughs> it's so good. He is awesome. It's silly. Yeah, it, it's a show that I. By the way, kind of just of left on and didn't feel like I had to be invested in it. Yeah, that's it, what it is. It's yeah. it's it's a it's a fun. You turn like, it on, it's candy. But it's, that's the thing where silly. like you know the office is that for me now. But I'm on like my fucking seventh rewatch exactly. or something. Yeah. Like that. I just don't understand what people <clears throat> find alluring about the characters in the office because they're all either boring or horrible. That's my I big problem with the true. show. Is that like yeah. Jim is kind of an okay person. Everyone else is a complete idiot, and then Michael Sky is a terrible human being, and he's but the main character. But how far into it did you get? How far do I need to go? Because there's a me, whole what? new like cast of characters get introduced. Yeah. In, okay. Like, then tell me three. what season. Okay, so I should start with season three and just forget about seasons one and two. See, no, it's, it's breaking not a whole new. And he's like, no, we gotta watch from the beginning. It's no, you good. don't. It's have all to the watch same. All one. the people that you know are still there, but they just add in a, more core characters. And that's necessarily like the more you learn about Michael Scott and where he came from and like why he is the way he is you start to understand like you you start to and they redeem him a little bit and i think i'm gonna watch always sunny in philadelphia after this i mean oh, so you want to not watch that, that before with even more unlikable characters yeah, but everybody, all yeah. Like, yeah. Lean into okay it. i mean it's good it's like the seinfeld unlikable. where you're like everybody here sucks but yeah. i still love it I yeah like that's, that's, yeah i think that's just i just feel like the, i the just show. i just the, 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 I tried with The Office, and mm. I just can't tell if it's funny or serious or neither. Mm. And I just don't like that. I'm I just, just more don't bread know and butter the, kind of guy. When did this turn come from you? Because for like three weeks straight, you kept saying, "Let's do Office and Review." Let's because yeah. you kept saying, that. "Oh, because I'm oh, lazy gosh. and didn't want to do KFA." <laughs> this is a hard show. No, this was after KFA started. Oh, I'd still do. I would still <laughs> do it. This was like post New York. Yeah. I would still do it because people love The Office, and, and, and it, it's not that I don't. Like I'll watch an episode if it's on and be like, okay, that wasn't that was that was it. That was fine. It's not like it's torture to watch them, and there are some funny moments. It's just with Brooklyn Nine Nine, it's a show that actually here's a here's a perfect thing. Uh, I was reading about Psych because I spend a lot of time reading about Psych. I don't know why, and I retain none of the information. By the way, I read about Psych <laughs> almost on a weekly basis. Don't remember anything, but. <laughs> One of the things that I really liked about the the show creator was talking about Psych, and he was like, I wanted to make Psych because I wanted to make TV fun again. There were so many different like shows out there that were trying to be something they're not, and Psych is just a silly, fun show. And I think that's the itch that Brooklyn Nine-Nine is scratching for me right it's now. It's like Big Bang Theory. How fucking dare no, you? How fuck it's dare closer to Big Bang Theory. How? No. It's the same type of show. It's the same type of show. It's not, not wrong. It's yeah, a single, yeah, camera, is, no, it's a single camera show, and it's got way more weight. Both and of you have the worst Big Bang Theory is like for the lowest common denominator out there, you know. Yeah, it really is. I mean, although I'll be honest with you, if I ever get into a Big Bang Theory, I will fucking. I will turn this. I hate this. No, I, I've tried watching episodes of Big Bang Theory. I just, it's not for me. It's not. It's, good. That's very I don't like. Think it's good. That's very multi cam. 
like uh, sitcom. But uh, that's what Brooklyn I'm saying. Like, Brooklyn Nine just needs a laugh track, and it, I feel like it'd be there. No, no way, dude. Yeah. Let me tell you this. It's so good that Craig Robinson was like, I'm going to be on this show more because it's better than The Office. He said that in an interview. <laughs> I'll find it for you later. <laughs> Look it up. Just Never remember it. Give him. He's fucking great as Doug Judy, and how dare you? Oh, no, man. yeah, I'm just, I'm just like shitting on Brooklyn Nine because you don't you like love the Brooklyn Office, Nine, but you love it, right? I don't love it. I really liked it. Which one do you like better, though? Then the. <laughs> 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 what question is this? <laughs> I just tried to trip him up a little. <laughs> uh, I don't know. I don't know. Look, I mean, honestly, I, I, it's, it's just not my style of humor. The Office. Mm. It's, it's a little too. It's a little less zany than I want it to be, and a little too awkward. The awkward humor, the awkwardness, I think, is what you guys think is hilarious, and it just gives me anxiety every time I watch this fucking episode. A, a show that my dad got me uh, kind of into when I was uh, in Cleveland is a show that you would hate because of that. is called Letter Kenny. This is something I, I Canadian. Won't, show. Uh, yeah. yeah, I. I I don't know if you've watched it at all, mm -hmm. but it is it. I was just trying to describe it to Kevin. It is the if they put Napoleon Dynamite into a TV show, but like kind of still made it work. Very quirky, yeah, very, very quirky, indie. and it's like about like kind of middle of nowhere Canada, like these farmer guys who are just hanging out and just doing all this like weird, awkward stuff. Yeah. Weird show. It's very much like a, a Trailer Park Boys. It kind of reminds you of that humor. Like that's yeah. one of those shows. It's that, just they're like hanging out. Deadpan. Uh, they're just hanging out in a fucking barn, and it's just you just hear their yeah. conversations, and then they go somewhere else. Like it's yeah, just, yeah. it's very weird, but yeah. it, it's, it is weird. It's cool. I liked I like it. it. It hooks me more than Trailer Park Boys. That was a show that could never hook me. Mm. I don't know why. Yeah, I it's I've had a lot of people reach out and be like, you should try, you should give Trailer Park Boys a shot. I think that, I think all of the seasons are on uh, Netflix right now. Yeah, but there's an episode where they meet Rush. Oh, that's awesome! It's really good. They go to, well because they're all like they're Canadian, they're big fans sure. of them, and so they they get backstage and Rush is back. They're like, "What are you all doing in here?" And like they bust in, and and then uh, the main guy uh, character name is Bubbles. He ends up playing on stage. With them, and it was like an actual concert from Powerpuff where he, Girls, where he came out in the. Oh, that's cool! Like there was like an actual concert where he did this, and they filmed it all like as a part of the How show. How the hell did they get that? It's so stupid. How did they it's get so that? Cool. That's amazing. <laughs> if I if I told you Andy for a KFA of bit, you're gonna go on stage and play YYZ with. Oh my uh, god! With Rush, I wouldn't be able to keep up. Do? Can't keep up. Yeah, it's a hard song. <laughs> it's a hard song, dude. It's a really hard song. <laughs> I don't know. Oh my god. But yeah, that's his oh. room from HBO. Fantastic. Mm. Um, again, what's the Sandia show about? No clue. That, it looks like it's about good, drugs. Though. It's about like coming of age, whatever. Well, the big question though is like, just what's going to be the next Game of Thrones? Mm. Because it's not like, what is it? What's the big Harry TV Potter show remade now? for TV? Oh yeah. shit! I'd cry. You know, I, I still hold out that they'll do an horror series. That'd be amazing. Ooh. If, let me pitch you on this, Barrett. You and me right now. Come let me pitch you on up? this, Joey. What's you can join to Andy or a fake ass fan. Get out of here. Lord of the Rings is better. So, oh, my God. oh fuck off! You're so wrong. So much better. <laughs> You're so wrong. First off, only three books. What happened there? Four if you count the Hobbit. Harry Potter, seven books. <laughs> <laughs> so people say maybe eight, squeeze it out. Eight if you, count, <laughs> if you count the play, but it's not really a book because it took me like an hour and a half to read. <laughs> mm. I'm gonna pitch you on this, Barrett. All right, pitch me on. This. Doesn't have to be HBO. Actually, it could be anything. It could be Amazon. Yeah. Probably not Amazon though, because they're not. They're hit or miss. Yeah. Love, marvelous Miss Maisel. Yeah, shout That's out to them. That's the High Castle, which I really liked. Couldn't oh. get into it. It was too intense. So fucking boring. Was that the one no, with the uh, or the Nazis? Or yeah, no, okay, the okay. Nazis won, and then they like America had to like so like Wolfenstein, but yeah. not as cool. And then yeah. like you're, the the one yeah, thing I, the issue I had with that show was I was like, oh, there's no end in sight for this. It's like the Handmaid's Tale. You're like, no one's mm. gonna win. They're just gonna keep being tortured forever. So I will not watch that show. It sounds horrible. It looks it's like the one thing D and I have to bond over. Oh god. It just it just is so intense. Yeah. It's I don't know what it is about the human condition that we have to we're drawn to these horrible experiences. Like Chernobyl. Oh, good, oh I just I can't started wait. it. I gotta watch. Oh, that's what I gotta watch next. Oh, it's good, man. So episode three tonight. Also, HBO. Big Little Lies coming back. Okay. Right. We do six episodes per season. Okay. You get Danny Radcliffe. You get Emma Watson. Okay. You get that abomination of a friend. What's his name? Rupert Grant. Thank you. Uh, I wanted to play. I, seen a <laughs> I, know, I, I love Rupert. Right? I just thought I was gonna make fun of him, but he's like, okay. he's also in a, a another weird show right now where he uh, discover he oh, like finds out he has right? cancer, but then like a day later he finds out that it's not true, but he doesn't tell anybody, and so like because his like because everyone treats him great, yeah, yeah and that's funny. It's awful. It's it's another one of those like kind of awkward. So you might hate it, Is but it it's a comedy. A, it's yeah, it's a okay. comedy, like a and it's comedy? with one of the guys from um from Shaun of the Dead, uh, and yeah, Is it it's, Nick Frost. 
Yes. Okay. He's and it's like spot. that's his doctor, and he's like a terrible doctor and stuff. <laughs> and so he's like, "All right, play along with me. Like, you're gonna cure my cancer." And so the whole series is them just trying to like keep up this lie, that's and it's so fucking hilarious. Funny. But anyway, so we get the six original ep- three, six episodes per season. Okay. We get everyone back. Okay. And it starts with Harry, like first year of aura school, or he just graduated, and it's his first year as an aura. Mm. That'd okay. be amazing. Or you say we can't get them because that's too much money. Oh, Obvs. Just pick one, dude. There's no it's, <laughs> we do we do horror set in America now. Or we do. <laughs> see my my thought if you're ever gonna do an offshoot, unlike uh, Fantastic Beast, like I would want to I want to do another prequel, but not all the way far back to Fantastic Beach, which I thought was a terrible idea. Um, no. You go back to when Voldemort was originally in power, and you do the story of like the original um, Order of the Phoenix. And like all of the parents and stuff, and get to learn more about them. And yeah, but I feel like we already know that world. Yeah, and we already fair. know how it ends too, because no it's one actually like does anything to overcome the bad mm-hmm. guy. He just kind of screws up. There's just like there's cool. I feel like there's cool opportunities there to do some cool character development and arcs and stuff like that. I, I feel like that there would be a really cool place to go because we don't know who dies. Like uh, all we know is like there's they look at this picture and like. A couple people are like, oh, things yeah, don't go yeah. well for them. Things it's tragic. Seeing the story of how that all goes down, seeing uh, Longbottom's parents get, like, fucked tortured, up. Yeah, yeah, tortured would be, you know, real interesting. I think I just, I want, think I just want her to write the books of Harry going to aura school and then becoming an aura. She'll never do it. I know. No She'll never. I don't understand she is why more not. likely to confirm that Dobby has a foot fetish uh, than write those <laughs> books. Just so fucking, like, just you know what I mean, like Andy? Media. It's like, you know, you like when you when you love someone because they do the thing, and then they get popular for doing the thing, and they don't want to do the thing anymore, and you're like, just do the fucking thing. Do the thing. Oh, you know about George R. R. Martin? Yeah. Where he's like, I'm going to write I'm gonna write other books that are like the Targaryen's history. You're like, nobody fucking cares about that, dude. <laughs> I saw a really funny tweet that was like, man, they need a fucking um, petition to, re- to redo the last two seasons. And they're like, okay, we'll do it. But like, it's with... It's with caption. It's with subtitles. It's actually only subtitles. It's two books. <laughs> <laughs> so you just gotta wait for that. <laughs> like, it's genius. Wait for that. You'll get the last two seasons. I wonder. Oh That's God. I don't know. Do you guys ever think you're gonna go through and read Game of Thrones? God, at all? No. I'll read clip notes. No. Uh, Alyssa read through all of them, and she has always been convinced that they are not well written books. Like people are complaining about the story now, and she's like, "Was the story ever really that good, though?" And she like she. You know, we'll pull up arguments of things that she's read, and the only reason she was invested is because she liked the characters of the Starks. Sure, she was. In, that's the only reason that that's she kept along. Uh, yeah, she fucking loved well, it. Yeah, so. and then Alyssa, being Alyssa, was like, "Well, I've already read these, and now I just have to read them all because I have to know how it, it like not ends, but yeah. how it all." Plays yeah, she out. made Once herself read the entire series before she started the show. That dude so. is going to die before he finishes. Yeah, I books. know, absolutely, and it's going to be a tragedy. <laughs> he's a he's a. Uh, a f- He's a friend of Stu Gatz. Is he really? really? He, uh, yep. he, uh, Stu, he met Stu Gatz at a great football f- uh, fantasy. Well, his, that's the thing. There's a, there's a problem with George R. R. Martin because like, he would always talk to Stu Gatz about the Jets. And and he would come back on the show and be like, yeah, we talk about the Jets. You know, They're, they're both Jets fans. But then he came out as getting really, really mad that the Giants let go of Odell Beckham. And he, like, he wrote this blog about how the Giants... Stu Gatz or George so, Martin? George, George R. R. Martin. Martin. So they were like... Well, what the fuck? Like, you kept saying he's a Jets fan. You're lying to us, clearly. Like, typical lying to guys. He's like, no. He wore a Jets hat. He would talk to me about the Jets. And then it kept, turns out that, like, George R. R. Martin is, like, a fan of both teams. Mm. Like, he's like, no, he's like, I grew up a Giants and a Giants fan. I, I, like, no, you can't, can't fucking do that, dude. I did love the you theory before they confirmed that. that was that he just met someone else at yeah. the Grateful Dead. <laughs> but there was so a much old drunk. <laughs> Because all Grateful Dead fans look alike. Yeah. <laughs> That's yeah. fucking yeah, and so they all the, look so like they, George R. R. So Martin. He, keeps, he gave him his card and he was like, Yeah, I'll be at the. <laughs> but he gave him a, a, a special coin, like a Game of Thrones kind of like. Here's a coin because I met From you and world. I'm George R. R. Martin. Right. Some straight up John. <laughs> so just John curious, he just sold it or gave it away. Or something. <laughs> <laughs> but they keep in touch, and he wants him to get on. The, he wants to be on the show because he's oh, a big he's football fan. He's a there. big sports fan. I would love to sit down with George R. R. Martin. Me and be too, like, man. And be like, what's going on? What's we have up, a show. Dude? We have a show now for yeah. that. We yeah. have I mean, cool oh, if we could get him for that, that'd be amazing. But I mean, <laughs> I'd like to sit down with him. Like maybe five years from now, when everything's settled, the dust is settled, and be like. How did it really go down? On his deathbed. Is that, is he, what is he, like 89? Oh, okay, so cool. Well, it looks like Father Christmas. How old is George R.R. R. Martin? Isn't he 70? 
70. Nailed it. Uh, That's not bad. He could, he could be around for like 10, 15 more years then. Okay. He can finish these okay. fucking books. Yeah. What's up, everybody? Just wanted to take a quick second to thank our Patreon producers from this month. Bert Meg, Mark Starvagi, uh, Kieran O'Donnell, DJ Kento, and Sugar Sam Davis. You guys are awesome. Thanks for going over to patreon.com slash kind of funny and supporting us uh, at that tier. We love you very much. Now back to the podcast. Ho, ho, ho. Ah. But, I, but will I, he? I saw an interview with him and Stephen King. Oh, and, and he was talking to Stephen King, and he's like, "How the fuck do you write so fast?" Mm. Dude. <laughs> and he was like, "I sit down and I'll write a paragraph and be, and I'm stuck." And, and he's like, "How do you write so fast?" And Stephen King was just like, "I'm just a baller, dude. Like, I just, <laughs> I'm just better." Dude, than you. So a weird thing. I went down a Stephen King rabbit hole a little bit when I was watching that John and uh, or. Yeah, I was like, oh no, I was watching Brooklyn Nine Nine because mm-hmm. uh, Andy Samberg makes a reference to The Running Man, mm-hmm. and he goes, "Oh, The Running Man, not the book that Stephen King wrote or like the original thing, yada yada yada." And I was like, "Wait a minute, did Stephen King write the fucking Running Man? I had no idea." And I, he wrote it as a different author, so he oh. wrote it under a pen name. I think Michael Bachman was the name of it, and there's a whole Bachman series of books. That he wrote, and the reason he wrote them evidently was because his publisher was like, "We can't put more than one book out of yours per year. It'll saturate the market, and it'll 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 like uh, it'll bring your brand down, the Stephen King brand down. Yeah. So if you want to put a different book out, you like a different style of book, because he was worried it was going to be a like, a, like kind of a, is that a, a true pigeonholed thing? as a as yeah. So as apparently he wrote writer. under a surname, a pen name, wow. and he wrote The Running Man, which is about a competition that happens in the United States where like anyone can kill you anytime." And that ended up being like the offshoot ended up being the running man with Arnold Schwarzenegger. Wow. But That's it's fucking really great. Cool. Yeah, it's weird shit that you thanks, Wikipedia. <laughs> like I go down this series. But like can you imagine you write so many books that your publisher is like, you're so writing too many talk. books, dude. I yeah. can't keep up with you. I can't read a book in a year. I can't imagine writing. Oh my one. god, I haven't read a book in fifteen years. Good <laughs> lord. Kidding? Yeah, well, we comic books count. <laughs> we were leaving uh Buffalo Wild Wings and there uh I don't know if it was you or Barrett or Tim that was like what was the last book you read, Andy? I was like, fuck, oh, man. I was like, yeah. I think it was uh, Fellowship of the Ring in middle school. Wow. But I discovered it wasn't middle school. It was freshman year. And that's I just never read. I like I was such a reader as an elementary school mm-hmm. student. Mm-hmm. Like, I was uh, constantly, we had this thing called Accelerated Reader. And you, oh, yeah, dude. And so, AR. so you would get AR points for reading these books. And then you would go test and see how well you did on the test or whatever. And I was all about getting those rewards, going yeah. on the field trips. Like, yep. I was reading. So when you guys got Book It? Oh yeah, oh pizzas. yeah, book yeah. it, yeah. But like, dude, Goosebumps books. The second one would come Animorphs. out. I finished one in a day. <laughs> Animorphs. Like I was all about reading. I, I and cheated my one day. Super on proud of me. Well, not really cheated, but like I, I totally schemed the system of accelerated reader. Like one day because I'd read all the Harry Potter books and they were all available on that uh, system, and I was like, yeah, let's just go in. There was one book. Questions. There was one book that, uh, it was funny the. There's ten questions, right? And so every Richard it, Bachman, that's what the word that the the Bachman. word had gotten around that the correct answer was the longest answer of all these questions. I forgot what book it was. Okay, but any time a question would pop up, whichever answer was the longest, that was the right answer. Like someone discovered that, hmm. and so every student fucking tested on this book <laughs> that they'd never read, just because like, oh yeah, that one has the most words. Let me click that or whatever. Yeah, it was really hilarious. really funny. Yeah, God. but dude, AR was like the wow, shit. what a book throwback. It, go Jesus. fucking book it. Go to pizza. Get a personal. Pen and I still have a, a PS1 pen. demo disc with oh, fucking Tony Hawk, and it was the best, dude. I, Reading I, is is rewarding. My wife uh, reads a book a week. <laughs> I swear to God, a book a week. That's impressive. I just see her over on the Kindle all the time. She's just boom, 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 just going through, and and it's crazy because she has this ridiculous knowledge of all the books that have been made into movies. Because she'll see a movie, like she'll see a movie come out, and I'm like, oh, that looks like a cool idea. She's like, yeah, I read that book like a year ago. Oh, like, like, where'd you fuck. go, Bernadette? <laughs> that, did you see that trailer? No, what is that? It has a uh, Kate Blanchett. Okay. Or maybe it was Kevin that I was sitting next to that was like, that looks like a weird movie. I was like, yeah, it was a weird book. It's it's very strange because there's that whole market of Hollywood where people just buy books before they're even written now. Right. And like before they even come out, like people have the options to buy them because they have this all this power, which is smart, I guess. Because, you know, if you like the author, they're probably going to be, it's probably going to be a pretty the good built-in audience for a bestseller. Right. Uh, I just think it's hilarious. I, I, I want to read more. I really do. Do it. But I just... Reading's cool. 
It's I've been oh, playing ever. video games a lot lately, and I feel yeah, like that makes are. me um, way more valuable to this group. Yeah, we, oh, we can start a book dog. club. Nah. Dude, people are already commenting on Gamescast today, and they're like, "Man, this KFAF guy should be coming in every episode review games." They really thought I was great. Yeah, and a lot of people are coming to my defense when it comes to the Office. My opinion on the Office. A lot of people say that you just <laughs> 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 no, but that's the problem. Is I started getting that like it's so funny because when I was. I used to just want like the five hour video game experience. And mm. for some dumb fucking reason, I've gone down the rabbit hole of these like 50 hour grindy ass open world games. And I don't know what to do about it. But have you started playing Rage 2 yet? <laughs> no, we got the code like right before I left for Cleveland. So Dude, I downloaded it. And I haven't touched it. It is like heroin. I can't put this <laughs> fucking yeah. game down. Hell yeah. And it's not even that good. There's no plot to this game whatsoever. It's just a collective It's just a grind my arm. Shoot me up. to Let's get go. the thing. And then I did. I did. It's such a straight to DVD sci-fi movie that nobody watched. Nobody watched Except it. Except for Nick. <laughs> but like, but the gameplay itself is great. Mm. It's just. Oh, it's got a great hook. Yeah. Oh God, it's so good. It's really addicting. But yeah, but I went down the rabbit hole the other day of like, finally, I just got tired of looking for shit and out came the IGN wiki guide. Oh And man. now I'm like, I got all the guns wow. now. Oh, but shit. then I'm like, but once I do that, it's, it's the beginning of the end. Right. Because it's, it's such an empty feeling when you didn't find the thing yourself, mm -hmm. when you purposely are like, I'm just going to go to this, this, but also I got the Icarus, which is like way more fun to drive than the, the car because it, it flies. The, the little, yeah, uh, it's like the little flying propeller thing. Yeah. I, I, it's so I much better. You recently, should use it all the time. It's so much better. I kind of like, I think I'm putting Rage 2 down. Yeah. Only because there's there's other like things Apex. coming out, and I'm going to be on Gamescast on Thursday. And so I want to like talk about something new that is because that isn't just the same three games I play all the time <laughs> Apex, Fortnite, and uh, Overwatch. Right. I saw you playing Spider Man. Um, oh, oh, yeah. I, I had to go back to Spider Man. I, hadn't, uh, I had never played the DLCs. So I finally beat the first DLC, and I was like, whoa. And it's, it's nice and short. It's like three hours. Yeah. yeah. And that kind of like fucking blew me away. I was like, holy shit. It's crazy. weird to me that I don't, I didn't like Spider Man and I didn't like God of War, <laughs> but I like Rage Two and I like Far Cry. It's very strange to me. Like well, my it, it just are keeps weird. with the theme that you have weird and bad opinions, kind of like how you think uh, The Departed is a bad movie. So. <sighs> Again, I don't think it's a. Hell, I don't. A lot of people have been telling Nick movie. it's a bad movie. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of people have been saying that. I'm right. Maybe coming to my to side. Speaking of God of War. I watched the uh, Raising watched the Kratos documentary. Now, what is that? Is that they just followed the production of Raising of Kratos the follows the the production from five years ago, or from from the whole five year process of this game being made, and the process of Sony Santa Monica having another game that they were working on, mm. and then the big layoffs happening, but they're mm. moving to a new studio, and it's like, what's the vision for God of War? And and Corey Barlog talks about how people were just kind of done with with Kratos, and we're like, ah, eh, we're tired of this guy. And then they had to figure out a way to breathe new life into him, and and it's so fascinating. the The process just looks, it's fucking insane. Like the amount of arguments that they have, the the amount of times where they're all talking to each other and second guessing each other, and like, should we do this? What the fuck are we doing? Oh my god, what kind of decision is this? Right. Oh, we spent a year and the last year and a half making this ten minute E3 demo. And now we have to make that into a 30 hour game. Oh my God, what are we doing? We, we need to extend this. We're running out of time. Shit, like, and, and, and they, anxiety. They, cut to like all, this. they cut to all the conversations of them talking to like Art. And he's like, there's one guy, I forgot who he is. He's like, look, I have the privilege of talking to all these artists, many of which are very introverted, uh, many of which are not very confident in themselves. Just because, and he's like, and everybody's different, but it's like, you have to treat everybody with kids with kid gloves because everybody reacts differently right. when mm -hmm. something you know to a situation whether it's, it's like a like, teacher of like a, a for, like a yeah first grade when it's class like hey whatever you're doing we need you to fucking do this thing Wait, right? is that what you're supposed to do with people that work for you I, th I, yeah, just thought you make, I just I thought you just make fun of them until they <laughs> I thought you told them to put a VR a helmet on and dance with them. <laughs> 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 you didn't watch Nick's Instagram. So uh, Kevin, yeah. today. Kevin is over there. No, yeah, he's he might be sleeping. Yeah. 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 Okay. Anyway, yeah. So uh, it, uh, it's about a two-hour long documentary, right? Um, it, I think it's a must-watch. They and they, where's it at? Where can you find uh, it? It's on YouTube. It's, oh, it's on YouTube. Yeah. Wow. Okay. And they show the uh, the reveal, yeah, the original. On yeah, the sirens on our side. Uh, they show the original reveal of the E3 demo. Where it starts off with a little kid and like really the build cool. up to it, the way they build up to like, oh shit, we're about to be there. And Corey Barlog is like gonna go to the LA Auditorium or whatever, wherever E3 is taking place. And they're like, oh, you can't show that you're working for Santa Monica. Cover up your shirt. 
we like nobody can know that Santa Monica is here it's here mm. wow. because they know they would know that we're working on game on God of War right or something like that. So cover up your shirt, put a hoodie on. Like I was just, gonna, yeah, I was gonna say they also know it's Corey. <laughs> so. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So uh, yeah, so they they show the crowd shot and it's uh, all the working parts that are happening, and then it's you know um, it's Atreus who's like. Uh, and you hear like, uh, grab that knife, it's your mother's or whatever. And so yeah. like he grabs, what's this for? And he comes out of the shadows, like he's like, uh, we need to hunt, well, I'm hungry. And everybody sees that it's Kratos and they show everybody's God. reaction of like, oh <laughs> shit, he's fucking back. And it's like, dude, the chills that you get from- I, I feel like I got and, chills just hearing yeah. you say it. And, and, then, and then Corey has to play this demo on stage Oof. and they're like, Fuck every turn that he made, every time like he'd walk through, like, oh I hope he nails this. Oh, oh he nailed it. Fuck yeah, okay, cool, yeah. cool, cool. And like, oh, I hope that this thing triggers. Okay, thank yeah. God. Like it, they did it's a live a, it's fucking a performance. Demo. Yeah. You know? It's a, yeah, that's with, intense. With the, and we've also with the orchestra seen, playing. And yeah, it's really, really cool. They talk to the composer and he's like, Yeah, and like and I'm commanding this sound swell, and then Kratos walks out. And then the crowd fucking roars and goes crazy. And they show like the composer like doing that, and the crowd roars and he just smiles like, yeah, yeah. like <laughs> fucking yeah, nailed it. Like it's so good, dude. And then yeah, and then I mean, they re- a lot of the process of being away from your families and like the stress that goes into that. And, yeah, because like, right. their dev cycles what like three or four years. No, this is like a five and a five and a half year game, I believe. Was it? Jesus, and they show like fucking and they, they ask a uh, Shannon Studsill and I forgot, uh, I forgot her name, Yumi, I believe. I forgot her name. Uh, but they yeah, both right. they both ask him about like how it's been trying to balance with work and family and stuff and and she Yumi I believe is her name she talks about how you know it's hard and this and that and they cut to Shannon and she's like kind of fighting back to you she's like I don't really want to answer this right now uh, <laughs> it's really really tough moment. yeah tragic yeah moment. they and never go back to it too they never yeah. do yeah uh, the, uh, Kevin the moment that like oh made me fucking tear yeah. up is when they talk to. The guy who plays Kratos. I for, uh, oh yeah, and he's talking about his kids. And yeah, they yeah. they talk about like how you guys should watch this. It's like channel really channel emotions. I like how you guys are describing it. Channel yeah. emotions for these really important scenes when you are uh, acting as Kratos, and this moment's supposed to be very very uh, emotional. And he's talking about how like I had to channel where I've let my kids down. Mm. And it shows him on screen, and he's doing the thing where he's wrapping the chains around and the. The woman in the game is like, you know, you are, you're a monster or something like that. I forgot the line is, and he's like, and they cut to him like in the mocap suit. He's like, he's like, yes, I but know, I'm no. I know, and like tears running down his eyes. And they cut back to the actor talking Fuck. about it. He's like, I've let people down, and uh, this was kind of like my, you know, me making it right. And then he's kind of like, but I don't want to really want to talk about that anymore. So let's talk about something else. Yeah. His eyes are just Yay. like wow. It's really good, man. Yeah, it's it's, it's so great. crazy to me as an outlier when when it comes to like video games. Obviously, you guys are way deeper with that stuff than I am. But you forget, like I forget how big God of War was as an entertainment property. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That was last year, right? It was like it was a like game of the year for a lot of people last, last year. year. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. like it's so weird to me because I'm so caught up in in just movies. That I think, oh, video games are still that thing that other people do. That I just, I that whatever. It's not that big of a deal. But you have to, you, you pro- that probably made more money than ninety five percent of the movies that get released in theaters these days. You know, I think, yeah. Probably. I mean, how much, like, see. Kevin, how, can you look up how much God of War made? Yep, the newest sure. one. How many? How many? And like copies GTA Five is like the best selling entertainment thing ever. Oh yeah, there time. was there were years where it was every time there would be a Grand Theft Auto, it would be the highest grossing entertainment property period. And then it was like there were moments where it was like uh, I think it was uh, Call of Duty took mm-hmm. that over for a while. Gotcha. There was there GTA were like, is always in like the top the 10, 10 sold every month. Yeah. I don't know I how. I don't understand how people still haven't bought Like who GTA who five. exists out there that doesn't own this <laughs> well, goddamn I, game? I, I, I have no do idea. you do you think it's also because like the people are purchasing like the in-game money and stuff or like the GTA Sharks. online? No, I think it's like, just no, I think it's the copies the of the game sold. Yeah. yeah. It's, um let's see. Oh, okay. Well, let's see. Oh, I mean 131 million dollars in digital in a, month. in a month. Wow. So, so a lot. Holy crap, that's a lot. That's crazy. Yeah, because I know they said it sold like Jeez, three man. or three point one million copies in the first like month or first something. three in days. The first three days. Yeah, wow. the first Damn. three days. Yeah, that's, that's a lot of copies. Well. That's what we yeah. like to call a hit, ladies. And so gentlemen. anyway, yes, the documentary. I absolutely re- recommend watching it. It's very, very emotional. It's very well done. They mm. show the struggles of being in game development and how tough it can be. It's, and it's one of those things where when I was working at IGN and I'd see people, I'd see. 
you know, because there's a lot of obviously overlap of like film production versus game production. But the one thing that film production has on it is that it ends eventually. Yeah. <laughs> Where like, uh, you know, you have films like uh, like when people shoot, like I think when uh, Peter Jackson shot uh, the Lord of the Rings trilogy back to back. So it was like a year of production or filming for them. Um, and like, I think all told maybe two or three years of just pre-production, production and post-production. And then boom, you had nine hours of movies. But five years, just think about five, where you were at five fucking years ago. Like none of you were here, right? Five years ago. I don't think we'd even. I don't think we left. Even, <clears throat> we well, did because we left in what 2015, 2014. Mm, yeah, 2014. We left. So that's nuts. I mean, that's a long. It's such a long period of your life working on one thing, and you have to yeah, like as a as a manager, as a person who runs a business, you have to assume that one of the hardest things is just keeping people. Because yeah. at a certain point, people must get lost in it and just go fuck. Oh, I'm, I'm just leaving. Yeah. Oh my god, there is a moment where. Corey's recording himself and he's in a car and he's like, I'm recording this just so I can kind of let my feelings out. Um, we are, I think, a year and a half away from blah, blah, blah. I forgot exactly. There was a, there was a big time frame crunch and he's like, and our art director just left. Yeah. And I don't know fuck. what the, f like, what the fuck? To what do, do we do? do? Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> well, that's huge. That's one of the hazier departments. Yeah. Right and there. and that's so huge. he, and the, the, there was several moments where he is visibly unhappy with different people there's there's a moment where he's in an office and he's like well we hired that fucking person over a lot of other people and they just need to fucking do their job yeah. <laughs> like there's a lot of like it, oh, it's really it's good hard, but yeah, kevin a big problem with it yeah why weren't we in it kevin are you kidding me? I mean, we're, we're just a bunch of losers. Easy we're Allies easy in this allies whole goddamn thing? Wait, what? Easy Allies is in it? They're all in it. over it. Those well, fucking they, they hacks use, are in it, and, we're, they, and, they use and like our hacks shots. aren't in it. <laughs> <laughs> we're way more talking than they are. Fuck this shit. They're like little video clips of them reacting. And yeah, stuff. reacting. Like, but also, uh, I guess we were too control. You know, but also, we there's, were a, so excited. there's a there moment where Altano and Dornbush are talking to Corey Barlock. Hey, we got Corey Barlock here. That was literally the same trip What about us? Why aren't we on there? Re-edit, re-edit, re, -edit, re, -edit, re -edit. It's a YouTube video. You can re-upload those, right? Start a petition. That interview with Torno and Brian, I, uh, I produced. I'm signing a petition. Cool. Yeah, nobody cares about you, Baron. Does it, ever, <laughs> does it ever trip you guys out? Like, as big video game fans, does it ever trip you guys out when, like, Corey Barlog will come here oh. and talk uh, to us and hang out? No, because this is a weird one where, like, I got into video games only a couple of years before I found you guys. So, like, learning about devs and stuff is still kind of new to me. Right. Where I only knew about... Corey because of this new God of War. So it was like, oh, cool. Like, that's really cool. But the one that really tripped me up is uh, Nolan and Troy Baker. When Troy Baker and <laughs> Nolan North walked in here, and it was like, holy shit. Not only are these the um, Drake brothers right. from Uncharted 4, which is one of my favorite games ever, this is fucking um, Two Face and the Penguin from Batman Arkham City. Yeah. Uh, and it, like, because they, Troy really started coming up when I came into video games yeah. it was just like holy shit he's been in so many games that I love he was in the best Bioshock Bioshock Infinite yes <laughs> what a hot take wow. for me wow wow what a hot take oh, for dude. me come on that's yeah, a hot dude. take hot should I play Steve. Bioshock Infinite I'm gonna you would like calling it. you hot topic you would junior? actually really like I re it I like it, my, my uh, no uh, I love Bioshock 1 <laughs> I'm just fucking so around. I started playing Bioshock uh, back when it came out and right. I was like I don't I didn't I don't think I understood how the game was supposed to be played because I was right. like I'm, this is very frustrating I, I try to play it as a straightforward shooter and that's not how the game Infinite needs to be played. is way more for you that's what I've heard but yes. I actually ended up uh, coming back to Bioshock once I got I think I got a code for like the Bioshock anthology where you can just download yeah, all the of them remaster, and yeah. I, I downloaded it just because like I got the code or whatever dude you know, Infinite and will kind of blow your mind I dude I, I played the first one I, I like I went back and replayed Bioshock I fucking loved it yes I'll I never really forget when it. I beat Infinite was the same night that uh, Cliff Blazinski beat Infinite. And Cliff Blazinski had already been out of the industry, right? Like, he'd already been, he'd left Epic already by this point. And he made a blog post because he didn't know what else to do. Yeah. And he just had to <laughs> write about this game that he just beat. God. And was like, I don't know what else to do. I need to talk about this game. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I was like on the same fucking boat. I was dating a girl at the time. Uh, um, I was in her apartment and she was in her room and she had kind of like watched me play through some of the beginning and I was really hoping that she stuck with it because I just needed someone I beat the game I was like oh my god did you like I need a, did you see that? <laughs> I need someone to talk I about that. I need to explain yeah. what's that? that good because I thought people didn't like it as much as people the first don't, couple. People uh, don't because it gets compared to the first one. But I, yeah. I think they're there's the first one was so good. Yeah, but I think like the themes in both games are very different, and I think mm -hmm. that's why they changed up because Infinite is much more a straightforward shooter. Yeah, where the first one is a little more slower. People paced, had a lot more like, problems with the game design of Infinite. As yeah. to like why are we 
shooting a bunch of shit. Like what? Yeah, like, yeah and you had all the sky stuff. Too, yeah. Right? Yeah. Where it was cool. Right it was cool. It was cool. I'll give I love this is the games cast. Yeah. Yeah. I know. Uh, <laughs> this, is, yeah, this has been your episode of games cast. <laughs> uh, uh, going back to Troy and, and Nolan though, like it's interesting because when I, when I was at IGN, obviously, I used to produce up at noon and a bunch of other pieces of content and I was it was like the worst place for me to be because yeah. I did had zero knowledge of what I was talking about <laughs> so like when Nolan would come in I'd be like oh that's cool but I didn't realize how big a deal those guys were to people until yeah. like way later and now it's already cemented in my brain that they're knuckleheads <laughs> so I'm just like whatever well, well Troy, Troy's the main guy in Bioshock Infinite he's uh yeah, he's Booker, the Booker. Yeah. yeah and it, he's great oh along my God. with a litany of other games that he's been the main oh, guy sure, in yeah. as well as no, they were going back and forth. But it was like at the t- it was the it was the year that uh, Last of Us beat out Bioshock Infinite for Game of the Year, where he was against fucking, himself. Yeah. He was against himself. <laughs> he <beat> himself. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then yeah, I, I was rewatching um, uh, Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood, and that was like a show I had not watched into, since it originally come out. And so knowing Troy now, where he's like kind of one of the main villains turns good guys, mm. I was like, is that? Is that Troy? And I was like, oh shit, it is. And it's like cool to like just see like where they've come from and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. I wonder what their lives are like. It's gonna be so fascinating to be a VR. <laughs> well, they're part right? of the they're part of the let's play now. Are they coming now. to RTX? Ooh. Yeah, they are. Uh, I, I believe they are coming to RTX. Yeah. That'll be fun. I, I we was may a, have just we may have just uh does that announce yet? Was that announced? I'm always I don't know if some things are announced that we're gonna break I don't know what you're talking Yeah, about. who gives a shit? That retro replay is coming to RTX. Oh yeah. I yeah. think they talked about that. No, oh, whatever. Fuck it. Hey, they're coming. <laughs> yeah, I, I was talking. I, I really want to get into VO. Like, I want to like learn yeah. the ins and outs, and I want to make a reel and what. Well, you're people- good, you were good at Ooh. VO. I remember like your Do first car day, day or two. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Nailed it. No, yeah, I was. Um, I was just thinking of like what. What what does it take to make a reel? What do people look for in a reel? And then usually a I, body of work. And I was talking about this when I was when I was streaming, and people <laughs> <Basic>. <laughs> people in chat were like, "Dude, uh, Nolan and Troy are in the Let's Play Network now. Like, just fucking ask them." I was like, "That's a good point." Well, yeah, like, good but point. You, I think you need if you're trying to uh, get put yourself out there as a VO guy, I think you need to do a lot more VO for stuff first before you can get a reel together. But honestly, like, no, I don't think you have to. I, I think like new like. That from what I've looked into, there are sites where it's like, here's a prompt. Oh, uh, yeah. I, here, I've used those script, sites. I used yeah. to use those for uh, the animated series. Yeah. You'd go on and you could just type in like, you could find people and 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 negotiate with them directly. And then you just pay them. Like we did a, a few, it's quite a few voices that are like that um, in the animated Oh, but not show. even that. It's just, it's more of a, you know, when you look up, how do I... Uh, make a resume. Yeah, and they have like sort of like here's the what actually like, oh, like, yeah, yeah, like, yeah, the, like that. it's it's similar stuff like that, but it's like this is a villain, and here's a little like two paragraph monologue oh, I see. that this villain says in an anime, or this is a heroic figure. But how do you know? time it with the animation? Oh, there is no animation. Oh, okay. You're just talking. Yeah, so you're what just I'm recording. saying is, why don't we just bring back KF the KF animated series? We'll make you the main character, and then that'll get you a reel so that you can finally leave this job. Okay. Excuse me. On, what? <laughs> Excuse me. You fine, Joey. You can be in it. Okay. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. I thought Nick was like, it's fine. I'll leave too. <laughs> uh, no, but I, I do know there are sites where you can go and like sign up and do, they'll email you. Like you can put, you can upload that demo reel or whatever you want to there or just like uh, examples of like you reading lines and stuff like that. And then they'll, if people like that voice, they'll give you lines to read and you can audition for them. And if they like it, they'll pay you for those, have, for those reads. Done that? Yeah, that's what I was saying. That's 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 the service that I've used. I think it's like stars voices or something like that dot com. It's really cool. So if you're interested, what if, what if we just it? use cameo.com and we hire a bunch of celebrities yeah. to talk shit to Greg? God, we've been talking about that for, for so long. Yeah, I wanted to talk about so this so bad, but I also Months. just want to get Austin to just keep sending videos fucking with Greg. <laughs> I love it. It's fair. <laughs> anyway, what else did I watch this but weekend? But oh, for sorry. the VO thing, you should talk to Alana because I feel like she's gotten some of those roles just through like connections in the industry and stuff like yeah. that. Mm. So she might have some. I mean, that's largely tips. how it's going to happen. Like if you if there's one thing I've learned in entertainment and especially from like watching people kind of get bigger as comics or get bigger as like personalities in general, it really is like you your know. network of people that you can reach out to who will put you in things is the most important thing. I put out and a, having talent and being cool to work with, obviously, are, are equal important. Like Alana, but I, not you. I made it. Yeah, she's way cooler than me. Way more yeah. talented. I put out a video yeah. of me making fun of the voices from My Hero Academia. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I was imitating like three different characters and then I put it out and I was like, hey, he's my very serious reel. Like, let me I can only do Dragon Ball Z characters or My Hero Academia. And then Funimation, the Twitter account, replied to it 
because a couple of people tagged Funimation in there, mm-hmm. and Funimation was like, "Whenever you're in town, drop by. <laughs> like, we'll have you like come and like record shit." Because I think that I think they listen to our shit because I've seen them in our Twitch chat before. Mm-hmm. Funimation, yeah. Yeah. yes, yeah, yeah. yeah. So it could be, be surprising. Yeah, man. we're a. Uh, you know, we're a huge deal. Yeah, we're, we are. Largely because people will see eye to eye with me on my view <laughs> office. office. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of people come into my defense on that. I saw a lot of people on the Reddit saying Nick's right about this. No, no I don't no. think so. No, not at all. Anyway, on the last um, no. also this week, I watched a lot of shit this week. I'm so excited to talk time. to you about had a lot this. of free time. Uh, I uh, was introduced to the Baba Yaga. Yeah. What's the Baba Yaga? The Boogeyman from John Wick. <gasps> Uh, I'm so excited. I, I watched part one. They call it. Yeah, have you ever watched John Wick? No. I haven't. Okay, so so I barely it. watched it this weekend. Okay. Uh, so you barely watched it this weekend. Oh, yeah, you just part, watched it this weekend. I, yeah, I just. God, watched I thought like, you mean you barely watched it like it was on. And you were playing. You're like kind of like watching. Oh no no no. Uh, yeah, I finally watched part one and two. I rented them on, on a Prime Video. Um, the, they call him the Boogeyman. They, yeah. Gotcha. They, there's this long monologue about how like. We call him the Baba Yaga, and they're like the boogeyman. Uh, and he's like, no, he's not the boogeyman. He's the person the guy? you sent to kill the fucking boogeyman. Uh, <laughs> like he's, he's John is that Wick the guy is like an Ant Man and the Wasp, where he's talking about the yeah. Baba Yaga. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is oh, he talking about yeah, John Wick? Exactly. Yeah. Oh, okay. Cool. It could be so. tied universe. <laughs> anyway, so I watched part one, and I I liked it, but I didn't think it was like the most mind blowing thing in the sure. world. Mm-hmm. Um, I think you, I, I I think that's a fair thing to say about the yeah. first job. But like, uh, but there was still very many fun mo- action movies. Still a lot of great action moments. And when you think about like w- how they did it in production, because I've heard from many people of like uh, like how they did all the stunt coordination and all that stuff. Like hearing about th- that stuff is cool. Yeah, because it's like um, directed and produced by all the stunt people from the Matrix, right? Or a few of them. Yeah, some people from I I think they had a tie to um I want to say Deadpool <laughs> also, right? Yeah. Or what was it? Vaguely. David Lech is the guy's name that directed that, right? Leitch. Leitch. Kevin, can you yeah. look that up? Yep. I forget where they came from. Yeah, like they came from the stunt team from something. Mm. Mm-hmm. They were like second unit directors on as like stunt coordinators from one of those movies. Yeah. And then finally someone's like, let's just do this. And you know Keanu Reeves was just like, I'm fuck in. it, let's just do it and see what happens. Yeah. Because he just yeah. does so many weird projects like that. And God bless Keanu Reeves. I, I don't mean this to sound negative. Okay. <laughs> Because I love Keanu Reeves, and I have loved Keanu Reeves ever since I first saw him in. Um, he's not a great actor. He is not a good actor. He's not. Gotcha. Yeah. But he is such a fun person him. to watch, <laughs> right? And he's just charismatic enough that you just go, okay, I'll watch him. Yeah. Kind of like Tom Cruise for a while. Tom Cruise is no, actually I think Tom Cruise. Can actually has some chops. Yeah. Though. He has some range. I'm not gonna say he's the best actor, but like you watch Tom Cruise in A Few Good Men, and you're like, yeah, he's a pretty fucking good actor. Or the, or the firm, you're like, okay. Not okay. nowadays. He mostly just does like monster movies or or, or Mission Impossible movies. But what was the other one he, he was did? good in like the movies back the in the day. John Wick-ish one that he did. He did oh, Jack Reacher, Jack Reacher. which the first of which I stand by as being. I a liked good movie. the first oh, one. I've heard a lot of people love the first one. The second one is a made-for-TV film, which uh, is fucking uh, weird. Uh, anyway, bad. so then I I watched part one and it's like really late. It started at like a two in the morning. But again, I ended it and thinking like, oh, there was a lot of awesome action moments yeah. where I'm like going, oh fuck, you know, like yeah. yelling in my room. Uh, but not the most mind-blowing movie. I do really dig just the the lore of everything. Yeah. It's the it's yeah. it, it reminds me a lot of Kill Bill where like yes this is set in a modern world but a, there's a lot of like, like weird there, stuff that there are a lot of building. fantasy there's elements like underbelly undercurrent yeah, like, yeah. like not, cool. not fantasy but like no, it's, it's kind of fantasy yeah like where but like uh, with uh, with Lawrence Fishburne and like the bu- all the all like the homeless people they're yeah. all assassins yeah. you're like well we're all they, homeless they people all assassins. go to it's a, a continental. Uh, they all go to a continental it's got it's a hotel called the yeah, continental it's yeah. like this is where all the hitmen stay this is where all the assassins stay gotcha. and everybody has code words and all this cool yeah. shit so that was part two have you seen have you seen the John Wick stuff so the only thing I've been exposed to was was the John Wick VR game, which I had to play oh. for IGN, so that I like kind of know the content, mm. kind of kind of yeah. know what you guys are talking Con- about. Yeah, kind of knows what made it. I think, I think, so I, I don't think you're alone, by the way, because I think a lot of people saw the first one, were like that's cool, and it did well enough to warrant a sequel, and they thought, oh, we've got a little bit of an opportunity now. How do we take advantage of this? And one of the ways they did it was they built out a bigger universe, and it's centered around that continental and like the overarching. Um, like I don't want to say government, but the, the administration the yeah. High table. of yeah of the people who are making sure everyone stays in line, and the continental being like a neutral space is the coolest fucking it thing is. ever. It's an awesome. Like when you walk the in there, of this you're not allowed to, to do anything bad here or else, name? motherfucker. Uh, Lance, um, fuck, he's Arms in Deadwood. He's in Bosch. 
Oh, no, that's Ian, Ian oh, McShane, Ian, I want to say yeah, is his name. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then the, the other guy, Lance Reddick, is the other guy oh, who yeah. plays the he's he awesome. plays the concierge. Mm -hmm. He's so fucking many, awesome. Yeah. He's like he's yeah. the uh, he's the chief of police in Bosch, and Bosch is amazing. He's in the several video games as well. He's in yeah. French as well. French, Fuck, yeah, that's why. Um, um, but yeah, so I watched part two. Yeah, what'd you think? And I'm just common. locked in. It's yes! good, right? I am fucking <laughs> locked into this series, dude. I couldn't believe Let's go. the amount of awesome action scenes. And I think it was just that there were more awesome action scenes but just choreo uh, did the, continental the come choreography into, is super creative did the continental come into play in part one it, it did part right one. because yeah. they try someone tries to kill him in part one and, and then she gets like Adrian Padalecki yeah is. that's who it is um because she tries to kill him and he's like yeah you broke the you broke the rules and they like they try to yeah. take her out right yeah two is where it cut two I'm sorry I misspoke two is where the broad the broader world comes into play of like gotcha. there's more factions of assassins out there it's so fucking cool nice and it's totally cheesy it's very cheesy but it's I love it's it it's so good but it's cheesy in the same way that like you watch like three or four Fast and Furious movies and you're like oh no do I like this yeah, yeah. No, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> do I like has this gone from ironic to like just an actual and it's also like Fast and Furious thing? where the subtitles are very stylized yeah, uh, whenever yeah, yeah. somebody says something, mm -hmm. it's like, they come in. is I love he what, like, dead? And the word dead is like super like capitalized in red color this mm -hmm. time. Like it's, huh. it's fucking and then awesome, it, like, dude. Disappears yeah. in the wind and shit like that. I fucking love it. I am uh, so into this series, dude. I can't wait to go uh, see part three. We're going go Thursday? Three? Are yeah. you guys going to wait? If you guys go see it on Saturday, I'll go with you. Because <laughs> yeah. my wife's out of town this weekend. Ooh. And I have, I have a two year old. Oh, fun Nick. I have my butt. Fun Nick's out. Fun so if Fun Nick comes out, I'll watch one and two this week Dude, and see three this week. All right, deal. We, well, what we should do is see. Uh, Kevin, we're postponing our movie trip. We should see John Wick <laughs> first and then see a back to back John Wick Aladdin because I still have to see Aladdin this weekend also. Live action. Oh, we're seeing it on uh, Memorial Day. Day. Memorial Day. I'm, I'm Can you guys tell me which show you guys are going to be? Don't say it on air, but I mean, I saw it. Let me just. Sorry, Go I saw back. the Slack notification. I need to make sure it's the right one, and then I'll I'll see that with you guys. I'm, but I'm, I'm not sitting with see anybody. Yeah, not. I don't give a shit. Well, we can do the thing again where I sit right behind you, and then I laugh, and I go, Andy probably just <laughs> shook his head at me when I laugh. Or, or but during the previews, you lean over and go, why is it so loud? <laughs> <laughs> what did you do that in? Yeah, it was, Pikachu? Uh, oh, Pikachu. God, yeah, it, it was so to the loud. This was so loud. So granted, loud. this was the loudest movie I'd seen in a long time, and it was great because it was a... Uh, I, I saw Endgame the prior weekend, mm. and I was like, this could definitely like go up at least 20% in sound. Yeah. 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 But dude, <laughs> they had the it's fucking so the dog trailer. Like, oh, oh, yeah. oh, oh, yeah. yeah. And I was like, why is it so loud? <laughs> it's so fucking loud. The Dolby sound, because you guys saw it in Dolby, right? Yeah. The yeah. sound in Dolby the last couple of weeks has been, been really wonky. off. It yeah. was really yeah. great for John Wick. When I thought I saw it was great in uh, for Pokemon, but uh, it was like... Out of focus a tinge. Oh, mm -hmm. yeah. It was. Weird. It was. I like, don't like that. Come on. Like, I just wanted to yell at them. Yeah. Sure. I, I mean, if I if it had been a movie that I had seen before, I would have gotten up and been like, you need to get the projectionist back in there to focus the fucking, the lens. Yeah. It's just, or the projector. Oh, it, just a little. Just a little, a little twist. And I love all the weird ass cameos in John Wick. Like Kevin Nash, the wrestler. Uh, he's in part one. He's I just one love. Who played the uh, the the head villain in part two? The female. Who was it? Was I? Oh, that was Ruby Rose. The, yeah. No, she was in it, but someone else was oh. like the the countess or oh, oh the sister. I don't remember the who sister. that is. I don't remember what her yeah, name is. I don't know. I thought it was like a big actor. I didn't recognize I don't think her. So. But I know that in part three, because I want to say it was like Monica Bellucci or something uh, like that, but I might be thinking Matrix. Boban Mayanovic, who's a former Spurs player, and now he plays oh, for yeah, yeah, yeah. the but Detroit he's Pistons. Super, super tall, yeah. He's like seven foot three. Hell yeah! And he's the it, it, like the, he went viral because there was photos of him getting interviewed and then shaking the guy's hand, and his hand is like the whole guy's forearm. That's amazing. This guy's is he in it? Yeah, he, he's mm -hmm. in part three. He's that an reminds me. Um, that reminds me heavily of when Kareem Abdul-Jabbar was in a Bruce Lee movie. Was in like Game of Death. I think it was Game of Death. Do you ever know that? No, I didn't know that. Oh my god! There's so I, I, I people are gonna be like, Nick, you're a fucking Claudia Gerini. But what? Claudia Gerini. She's the other girl. Let me see. Let me see a picture of her. Anyway, Morpheus is in uh, part yeah, two. Yeah, okay, um, cool. And it was just like the coolest thing, like mm -hmm. Keanu oh, yeah, Lawrence Morpheus. Fishburne. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whoa! Lawrence like, Fishburne plays the head of like a like a band, or like basically all of the homeless people who are all assassins. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. And like that's their shtick, though. Like they're, fucking, they they hide in plain sight. The comedian guy. John Leguizamo? No. Well, he's one of the... Mm. The other one. Keep talking. The comedian guy. Bo Burnham. The comedian no. guy. Bill Jim Burr. Carrey. Uh, no. um, Eddie Murphy. Keep talking about other stuff. Um, Adam so, Sandler. So go back. Sorry. So Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, back in the day, used to train with Bruce Lee. So he took... Yeah, he used to do like Jeet Kune Do. Bruce that Lee used to train him. That sounds very familiar, yeah. And him and James, like... Co like uh, James Coburn, they used to train with him. So he had a lot of celebrities that would come train with him. And uh, he put Kareem in a movie. 
and I could be slaughtering this. Uh, people in the comments, let me know if I'm right or wrong about this. But there's he's in a movie, and there's, it's a great part because uh, it's I think it's the one where he has to go through the levels of the pagoda to get to the top. I never every, saw any Bruce Lee movies. Oh, it, mm -mm. The movie is. Uh, it's going to kill me. Can't bring up Bruce Lee movies if you can. Okay. Just bring up Bruce Lee yep, movies with yep, Kareem Abdul Jabbar. Says. I want to get this one right. Um, but he, every level of this tower that he has to go up has a guy that he has to beat in it. Uh, okay. And one of the levels is Kareem Abdul Jabbar, and he's sitting in a lounge chair, like a, like a, like a, uh, what do you call it? Like a folding chair. Mm -hmm. You know, the ones you go, you take out to the picnics. Yeah, yeah. And he's just chilling. And Bruce Lee comes up and he kicks him. As he stands up, and Bruce Lee looks down, and, and the fucking foot is like from his waist all the way to like, <laughs> like the footprint is like this big, and he just looks down, and then he stands up, and he's like, because uh, Kareem Abdul Jabbar was like seven foot something. Yeah, it's fucking awesome. Uh, oh, there it is. Yeah. Oh yeah, that was death. It. Something of death. Death game or some shit. game of death. Game of what was death. that? Yeah, game of death. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh. It's it's cool. It's a classic scene. It's it's the one uh, where he wears that the, the outfit from Kill Bill, which oh, they took that outfit from this one. Yeah. So he wears the that classic. Uh, the yellow jumpsuit with the uh, the stripes in the arms, and they sort of took that that look and it's brought it to awesome. Kill Bill. It's so but cool. yeah, type in the footprint. Just type footprint, and you'll oh, see what I'm talking about. Uh, we'll bring it up in a second. I mean, oh yeah, yeah that's the scene talking. right there. Look at how big he was compared oh, wow. to him. Oh wow! Holy shit! <laughs> look at that! <laughs> yeah, yeah. it's fucking dope. I don't this like scene was dope. There we go. I think yeah. the shorter That's shorts crazy. really accentuate how like how, how like tall he looks, yeah. how his legs are yeah. and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I'm not sure how tall Bruce Lee was too, but yeah, look how fucking that's Jeez. awesome. So that was the fight that he just beats the shit that's out of each other awesome. like that. It's so cool. Man, Bruce Lee was fuck the shit. If you ever get a chance, he was so um, cut. He had the that, coolest hairstyle. Game of Death is not one of my favorites because unfortunately, I believe cool that's the one style. where he uh, he yeah. passed away on, so they had to fill it in with. Um, a, a stunt double, like a body double, basically mm. that kind of looked like him. So half the movie, he's just wearing giant sunglasses because it's not really Bruce Lee. Uh, but obviously, Enter the Dragon is a classic, and if no one's ever seen it, it's one of the coolest fucking martial arts movies ever made. Who was the the character in Tekken that was modeled after Bruce Lee? Well, Fei Long was like was it Fei Long? Bruce Lee. That was that was a uh, Street Fighter. That was like super like Street Fighter Three or Super Street Fighter Turbo or some shit like that. Or it's just like a basic. It's a carbon yeah. copy of him, pretty yeah, much. It was, yeah, it was it was Fei Long. It was because uh, he, he had the big poofy pants on, yeah. with, like, the, the shoes. But he had the cool hair too. Oh, yeah. and it was Street Fighter. Yeah, you're yeah. right. You're right. Yeah. He had the big side, the hair burns. Because I think I think Tekken, very I think they had a the character in Tekken that wore that outfit. The, yeah, the the, the, the yellow yeah. with the stripe. But I don't think it was supposed to be a Bruce Lee character. I could be mm -hmm. wrong. It's been years since I played that. But and that's your history lesson well, on Bruce Lee movies. No, don't watch Street Fighter. Uh, so Saturday, movie night. Movie yeah. day. Movie day. I'm totally Wait, are we really canceling Thursday? We didn't even book anything for Thursday. Kevin earmarked it. He did. I can't do Thursday, but I'd love to do... I could I do Friday could or Saturday. Yeah. I can't do Wednesday. Oh, nice. Days Friday of the week are hard for me because I have comedy. But you just totally ditching me for you. And the wife. But I, here's the this. thing. I'm ditching you because I know that there's no way we all go see a movie and you don't get FOMO enough to come with us. No, yeah. Oh, no, that's no, true. That's fair. Kevin does not like to be left out. He doesn't. Uh, speaking of being left out, everyone, this is a great second to take a second and tell you about our sponsor. Because I want to tell you all about our amazing sponsor today. Robinhood. Robinhood is an investing app that lets you buy and sell stocks, ETFs, options, and cryptos all commission free while other brokerages charge up to $10 for every trade. Robinhood doesn't charge any commission fees so you can trade stocks and keep all of your profits. Plus, there is no account minimum deposit needed to get started so you can start investing at any level. The simple intuitive design of Robinhood makes investing easy for newcomers and experts alike. View easy to understand charts and market data and place a trade in just four taps on your smartphone. You can also view stock collections such as 100 most popular. Uh, with Robinhood, you can learn how to invest in markets as you build your portfolio, discover new stocks, track your favorite companies, and get custom notifications for price movements so you never miss the right moment to invest. Robinhood is giving listeners of the kind of funny podcast a free stock like apple ford or sprint to help you build your portfolio sign up at greggy.robinhood.com now back to the podcast all right we're back from that i just wanted wow. to throw that in there before i forgot <laughs> speaking of being left out <laughs> maybe, cut, maybe, cut, maybe cut the left out part out there kind of before uh you go into that. Because uh, I'm going to go in, hey, don't get left out. Robinhood is our sponsor. It's an investment. Whoa, 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 whoa. It's enough. It's enough. All right, everyone on Patreon, relax. It's still ad free. Let's go Saturday. 
Saturday what yeah, time? We have to go later in the day because I have a I have a birthday party I have to go to for Ooh. my nephew. He's not really my nephew. The nephew. Oh, okay. It's Eric's kid. I was like, Dozer's having a birthday. No, Dozer passed away. Oh, sorry. I can't remember. Wow. There's too many dogs. Wow. Like wow. Really? Winston, Winston and Chomper are my new nephews. Okay. And they're, they're going to live for a while. You talk about them more because that's why I don't know their I need to see them more. I got to get up to Tahoe more. I'm such a lazy brother-in-law. Let's go. You guys want to do a trip to Tahoe? So my parents on the way. So Should we like just mine. go and not tell anybody? See how long you it takes. Go this weekend? <laughs> <laughs> no. Oh, you mean you mean just disappear? Yeah. I don't think anyone would notice. I listened we're the to only ones left in this episode. <laughs> <laughs> we're the only ones left in this office. Can you everyone imagine if Florida. the four of us just went and Kevin and Cool Greg walked in tomorrow and that that was yeah just that it. was it. God, here's the thing. I'd love to do that with you guys, but it just sounds like so much energy. Yeah, you know, it'd be even better going home and sleeping. Yeah. That sounds great too. And then just not coming to work. You know? Yeah, they they were like, oh, and then they were shocked that I was like, I wouldn't care. Mm. They were like, "Why wouldn't you come?" Oh yeah, I, I, I was like, "No, because you would obviously be fucking with us." Yeah. Obviously, uh, I listened to I that episode know. on my flight uh, back here from from Cleveland because I had gotten the phone this call. Last week's episode. This was it. Just came out this last Friday. Okay. Yeah. Um. And so I had gotten the phone call about like who annoys you more and stuff, but I hadn't really gotten the full context of that mm-hmm. conversation. Mm-hmm. And listening back on it and thinking about it, I think you're definitely number one. I think I got to switch you and for you. Yeah, you and Kevin, because. Fuck yeah. <laughs> Because Fuck you, really? Nick. really, yes, because you want to know who's hearing this. <laughs> yes, because you want to know who's the cause of everybody in chat, Twitter calling me Milk Boy. It's you, Nick Scarpino. <laughs> You've done that. Have I done that? Yes. Tell him, Milk Boy. Tell I, him. Okay, so here's the deal. I didn't tell people to call you that. Yeah, but you fucking start. You said, know, you start. I just you said, put it in the wheel. But man, if boy. you resist, that is, the, no, that's I know. the thing. I know. That's what you have. That's what I've. That's the number one thing I've learned here. The more that you just like, kind of don't. You pretend like you don't care about things, the more that everyone forgets about yeah. it. Yeah. Like, like when uh, I got hired and it was Candy uh, Andy. Like that was the oh, thing. That not a thing immediately anymore? Candy oh, God, Andy. But that's because that's Greg is while. terrible. Okay. Greg's terrible at, at nicknames. Remember when he tried to call what was the nickname he came up with you for? The Joester? Joester. Oh, I like Joester. I just like Joe. I still call I think you that Joester. was a Kevin Greg hybrid. Olaf, and everyone yeah. knows I'm the king of nicknames. Are you? Again, are you sure you want to keep him at number two? <laughs> no, I don't know. Uh, yeah, listen to this fucking guy. No, no, but like, <laughs> you are tied. You are fucking tied. I'll cool bargain with you. If I kill list. Milk Boy, can I go back down to number two? <laughs> 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 no, y'all are, y'all are tied. Tell, <laughs> it's understandable. It's yeah. understandable. Kevin, you're in good. We're in good company together. That's <laughs> top of Barrett's annoyance. If you guys Kevin are wondering what the hell we're talking about, you didn't listen to last week's podcast. Joey ranked her. Who she's annoyed with most in the office, from like most to least, mm-hmm. and it went back and forth for a while about me and Greg being that number two spot. <laughs> I don't want to yeah. spoil it for you. Go listen to the episode. It's pretty it's great. A, it's a good one. Yeah, it's really fun. Kevin, who's your number one? Uh, most annoying person in the office. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's a good question. Man. Probably Tim for you, huh? No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> trying to huh? fucking play you're trying to project it onto him as I'm about to say you're so annoying <laughs> I mean it's, it's definitely Nick then Andy like right next to him yeah oh Andy annoys you yeah. is it because we fuck with you so much no 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 it's just because Andy's like opinion is just whatever's popular on Twitter you know jeez how She's much so of this is influenced dude, by the real. fact that they were making Calm fun down, of you while dude. playing VR today no because you're gonna be on there too you're gonna be on there too wait what I was, uh, I, was, I was calling you Hot Topic, and then he started giving me shit. So. <laughs> I'm calling Kettle Black. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. That's you got true. it, dude. You got it. Oh, man. Uh, Wait, what do you mean? I, 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 what do you mean? Everything I like is popular nah, on Twitter. it's fine. Don't worry about it, dude. It's, it's, is it just because I say Lord of the Rings is great? It's, don't bring that up, dude. That's not what this is about. Don't you talk about so, yeah, so it. I was trying to shoehorn Lord of the Rings into Every everything. Every time. Hey, what do you want to get for lunch? Hey, man. How about Lord, Lord of the Rings? Rings? You guys want to watch Lord of the Rings? Because I want you to know how wrong you are. <laughs> you know I have to watch them now? I have to watch Lord of the Rings again with Paula. Cause yeah. Because she's, she's like, we got to watch something good. God. Yeah. God. I, I would like to go back and watch Lord of the Rings now that I've had a little time away. Because mm. I think... I think I'd like it a little bit more if I could if I could watch it again. I think. No, it's trash, Nick. Do you think I so? I've fallen asleep recently. every single time. Joe, you fell asleep during an Avengers movie no, that I we didn't. went to go watch. We went to go watch a don't Marvel lie, movie. Don't fell asleep. Lie. No, she fell asleep during. Uh, no, she um, fell asleep during uh, Deadpool because Deadpool two because the screen was oh, so small. Fuck she you, couldn't. I hate it. <laughs> 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 you got a good day. What was it about letting things go, Joe? <laughs> mind of an elephant. I don't remember everything. This is why you're number two. I know it. I don't mind it. I don't mind it. You fell asleep during. 
during the disaster artist. That's oh, yeah. Where but that was in. like, I understand. We've been day drinking. Yeah. Circumstances. Also, yeah. that movie's not exactly like a mile a minute. Wham, bam. No. Thank you, man. Like, but she, bam, she'd bam, fallen bam. asleep in the first five minutes and then woke back up in the last five minutes. Yeah. So I was like, kind of impressed with. You got the gist. Yeah. You got but the gist. I, the but gist. people have tried to watch me or tried to get me to watch. Lord of the Rings, like four different times every time. It just it doesn't is, do it for me. All, all seriousness. I mean, I'm, you do, I'm you gonna watch actually Game talk. of Thrones though, so that's not saying much. Yeah, because well, I don't like really fantasy, fantasy stuff person. in general. Yeah, mm-hmm. exactly. Like so. All seriousness. But I watched the first season of Game of Thrones. Didn't fall asleep. But she also likes Harry Potter. I do. Harry Potter's dope. Well, Harry Potter's just great. Well, it's it's like Harry Potter's fantasy, but it's so good that it transcends its genre. Yeah. Obviously, Lord of the Rings. How many? How many Harry Potter movies do you like? Four of them. Four out of the how many? Nine. Whoa. No. Technically, there's eight. No, no, ten, no, no, ten, yeah, ten. But we don't no. count Fantastic. Nobody well, counts Fantastic. No, movies. it's not. You can't do that because every time I go, no, but the Hobbit were, was a good. You're like, no, it still counts. Yeah, and like, y'all fu- like, we gotta count Rogue One and like Solo and like Star. Like it, when you're talking about Star Wars movies, you gotta count the offshoots. So you gotta count the Fantastic Beast movies to our trash. Let me, fire. let me. But compl- it's not like Harry Potter presents Fantastic. Let me complain about Jake Tapper's tweet last night. What? I am somebody who uh-huh. definitely did not. I enjoyed the most recent episode of Game of Thrones, the finale. Yes. Right? yes. Jake Tapper tweeted out, just enjoy it, you big babies. He tweeted that out. Mm. I don't like that. I don't like that. Even yeah. Yeah, even as somebody who likes who, the episode. Who is this person? J- uh, CNN. CNN. Jake Ta- J- yeah. Gotcha. So he tweeted out, like, just fucking enjoy it, big babies. You, you bunch of babies. I forgot you what he nerds. said. nerds. Yeah. Um, and I, I hate that because the amount of times... It's I totally s- reductive. The amount of times that I saw that after watching the movie Solo... Was just like, just enjoy it. It's fun. It's like, no, it wasn't. You, you can't. A lot of had a great reply. Was like, that doesn't work if you don't enjoy something. (laughs) Well, yeah. I, I, so I think the natural inclination from mainstream, or rather, people who just don't understand what you like, Mm. is to diminish you because it's quote unquote like nerd stuff, or, or maybe they look at things that like like Marvel or Star Wars as not being of the same caliber as certain other things that maybe they like, but it's just not true. It's just, people have to stop thinking along those terms. Yeah, that pop culture can't transcend or be of any value to people. No, that's not what he was saying at all. No, but what I'm saying is like people go, hey, just just like it, babies, because, and and that that statement right there is so, it's it's so shitty. Because basically what it's saying is like, why is this thing so important to you? And in reality, why do you like, care so much? yeah, why do you yeah. care so much? In reality, people care because they care because right. they have an emotional <clears throat> investment in this because they've spent time and money more in in most cases. Um, and and the return they want is something good. And when they don't get that thing, that's good. I think everyone has every right to be critical of stuff. Star Wars is a perfect example of that. Obviously, we, we've been overly critical of stuff. Barrett and I have gone back and forth on because so we, many we times. come on different lines of the Last Jedi, and it's it's to a point now where. <laughs> Um, it's like. to a point. Well, no, Barrett liked it. I, I didn't care for it that much. But it's to a point where I respect his opinion. I'm not going to sit here and, and say Barrett's. Yeah, we don't dumb demi- because we've had he, so many he conversations. Got something out of a movie that I didn't get anything out yeah. of. Even though I, I think that my, it's just, it just comes down to what I want to get out of Star Wars versus what he wants to get out of it. Right. But at the same time, anyone who's like, I'm sick and tired of people calling like anyone that likes pop culture like a baby or something else out there or like nerds or whatever, and trying to say like surface you're, layer. Yeah, what you, like. what you like is is somehow. Um, is somehow not as important as the things that I like. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's just bullshit. It's, it's ridiculous. But then Did you, any of that come close <laughs> to your point at all? Not really. No, <laughs> right. no but I mean, but, like, it's a good point. No, yeah. but Jake, Jake Tapper, who's a fan of Game of Thrones, was saying, quit whining about it so much. It's good. Watch it. Enjoy it. It's not about Babies, like, don't cry about it. Quit crying about it. <laughs> And like, so and I'm someone who liked it. Yeah. And and I still just like ah, I don't I don't I like that take because that when I'm on the other side again after watching Solo and seeing a bunch of tweets like ah it's good just enjoy it, it guys it's like but it wasn't <laughs> you don't think that come on come it's on better man. than Rogue One come on hot topic no it wasn't that. that's crazy wow uh, <laughs> the only good thing about Rogue One was that third act you know. This is yeah, your it's ally. A great third act, though. This is your ally right <laughs> here. Is he mine? I'm number one on his list for people. <laughs> You're right. Yeah, You're right. annoyed. <laughs> Tied. To Everybody here has horrible takes. Let's just be honest. Yeah, with I think no. that. Yeah, I mean, obviously, it's because everyone everyone's different, right? What you bring in to the theater is completely different than what I yeah, bring in. Yeah, because we all have different life experiences and we all take in media differently. Or maybe so. you just like different pacing or different characters yeah, or right. different things, or you do. And that's the problem. Is a lot of these movies have revolve around like some level of humor. Humor totally subjective. All this shit's yep. subjective. Yeah. Um, the important thing is that it's uh, my hope is that at some point they do a Star Wars movie that I like again, and then maybe they do one we both like. Maybe that'd be awesome. I right? wouldn't that be great? Yeah. Who knows? As like long the as they keep Obi-Wan making them, I'll be happy. Yeah. Let's go. Because some oh, of us like amazing. trilogies that have won like twenty plus Oscars, right? Like 
like uh, Suicide Squad. nominated for like 50 Oscars, but they've won like 20 ish, you yeah. know, which is uh. crazy. It's a lot, it's a huge amount, right? Like, I didn't know you like, like, like Titanic. Like, uh, Hobbit hair oh feet. my gosh, what, did what, we have a new bonding thing? <laughs> did I miss the other two movies of the Titanic trilogy? Yeah. I didn't know. Yeah, I didn't know you loved the Titanic series so much. No, talking about Lord of the Rings. You guys know what I'm talking about. Oh, I want. I'm gonna, you know what I'm gonna do this awards. weekend? I'm gonna say, instead of seeing John Wick through, no, I'm not. No, I can't on. even joke. I can't <laughs> even joke. I'm not doing this to myself. I'm not watch Lord of the Rings. It's just yeah. I g- Let's get a big bag of popcorn, dog. Some Twix ah, time. Doggy dog. You know what Reese's I'm saying? Pieces, you know? My wife and I have been on uh, a deep bloat diet because she's going on mm. vacation this weekend. A what? A deep bloat. Deep bloat. So okay. it's, we call it Project Deep Bloat. I heard deep bloat. And I was like, no. That sounds like what I do all the time. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> That's what I'm going to do this weekend when after we're done with Project D, you get D bloat. Mm-hmm. D. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, Once that happens, yeah, dad, daddy's going in for yeah, dog. daddy's going in for some carbohydrates. I felt so embarrassed leaving fucking Detective Pikachu. I planned that day out. Here's how I planned yeah. that day out, yeah. Nick. <laughs> I didn't eat lunch. Yeah, I was like in my mind, knowing I'm gonna build it up. I'm gonna go fucking ham tonight on popcorn. Yeah, yeah. the biggest tub of popcorn they'll give me. Impressive. I, I ate the whole goddamn thing. Hell yeah. with a cherry coke with the, you know the shitty fake cherry coke that they have. Looks What's like it's still good. Why do you not like this? Okay, I, it's bullshit. Gonna... It's fucking bullshit. It's bullshit. Dude. He's right. And then and then the movie ends, and you. I'm sitting next to Curran and Shari, and Curran goes, "Fuck, you ate that whole popcorn." <laughs> 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 but I didn't get to explain to him, like, yeah, but I didn't eat anything. Eating, like yeah, I planned yeah. for I'm this. Don't let Curran body shame Come on, you. Yeah. Curran. I'm impressed by eating the entire tub of co- popcorn because, like, even if I'm like a third of the way in, I hate myself and I feel yeah. like gross. Oh no! Yeah. But like, that's the thing. Like, you can't. You can't. You gotta lose all respect for yourself. Yeah, yeah. you just gotta go all in. Yeah, because like right. there, there's tons of times where uh, Cool Greg, but I'll heart. even feel sick. So I don't know. Cool if it's Greg just will like... buy a bag of hot fries like he did the other day. Hell yeah! And he'll eat two, and leave it there for like an hour, <laughs> and maybe he he'll eat it. three more. And I do not understand that because I, if you give, if you put a bag in front of me, it's gone in maybe four minutes, dude. Maybe if I'm like, if I just ate. <laughs> Like, oh, yeah. Like otherwise, I'm it's like two or three minutes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but it's because it, it's nonstop, and I can't stop eating the fucking hot fries. Dude, I love them. And I kept eating Cool Greg's hot fries, and I kept. Oh, and he was like, "Yeah, Did go you for ask it." Him? Oh, okay. Cool. And I was like, "Cool Greg, you can't give me Any the more? green light like that, dog. Mm, they'll be gone." If, if I have the green light, I'm just gonna go hand. And I kept on walking up to him, like, "Oh, what's up?" And he was like, <laughs> "What did he say?" He was like. I like, yo, you can just keep taking them. You don't gotta like do this cute bullshit. With me. <laughs> <laughs> That's fucking but hilarious. I just, I, I can't. I have no restraint, and I was always blown away by it when I would go to friends' houses like for sleepovers and shit, and I would look in their pantry, <laughs> and they would have giant, the giant big ass bags of like flaming hot Cheetos. Oh, yeah. Like, how are you? Who how, had that much self control? Like, how did you not just tear through this in a night? I don't get it, dude. I don't. I don't. My, I got a buddy of mine, Ryan, and we used to do. Um, he used to, he got me the job at IGN. He's one of my best friends growing up, and we still we still hang out to this day. But I will never forget because we used to trade sleepovers. Like he uh, he'd sleep yeah, over at my house. Yeah, yeah. Ryan Reynolds, Reynolds, by the way, yeah, that's my buddy Ryan Reynolds. So, yeah, was this those City, adult or his Reynolds. kids? As kids. Okay. So we were like uh, maybe going 24. like maybe <laughs> seventh graders. Spend the nights. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we did this spend the nights. We never called it that. Um, no, it's always sleepovers. But what would be amazing is like he'd come over to my house, and my mom would make us food, whatever. And I, I would just normally I'm in my own environment, so. I would just house everything that was fucking sure. in front of me. Yeah, of then course. I'd go to his place, and his mom would make like cookies and all these things, and I would eat them all. And he would have like one of them. <laughs> Is it because it. you ate the rest of them? Yeah. No, it, I, I know it's just because he was skinny. He yeah, was just he like just wanted he one. just he used to swim he and he had a six pack, snack. and he was yeah. just like this kind of nerdy like tech guy that would play like well, he just swam, and so he was he just didn't have it in him to like. His Keep mother eating. would put these giant chocolate chip cookies in front of me, <laughs> and, I, and I would look at them, and it was sad because I would know deep down that at the end of the night, that plate wasn't going to be there. Yeah. I, it was just going to be an empty plate because I was going to eat them yeah. fucking all, and I would. It was you me. can't stop me right now. Because it was know? me and my buddy uh, Ryan and my buddy Todd. My buddy Todd was like me. He was a bigger kid Todd like Phillips. me. Big dick Todd. man. <laughs> no, not big dick. Actually, he might have had a big dick. I never okay. saw it. Stop. I did see him having sex one time, and that was cool. hilarious. That's cool. Yeah. Oh, is that when you opened the door? Yeah, that's when I opened the door and turned the line. I was looking for my butthole, I was looking right? for him to say <laughs> bye, and I turned the line on, and I just saw his butthole. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> and he was like, and he, was like, he looked over his shoulder, he was like, shut the door. <laughs> and so I turned the light Stop off and shut the door, me. and then my buddy Gareth came over and was like, well, uh, what's going on? I was like, oh, let me show you. Open the door. Put the line back on. <laughs> <laughs> You're an asshole. What a jerk. <laughs> yeah, Todd, uh, he never forget. I should not say people's names. Uh, I shouldn't say people's names. 
<laughs> it was the, it was it's one of those moments where you go I know this will probably forever hurt my friendship with this person but it's too good of a it's moment funny, to pass funny, up yeah. the timing was just perfect it's it was funny, perfect yeah. Uh, uh, but no yeah I've, I've always I've always marveled at people that just don't have that thing that they like I fundamentally broke that thing inside myself when I was a kid mm. that's that that whenever hormone gets released to tell you to stop eating, I fucking de- demolished that thing huh. when I was like 10. So I don't have that anymore. I've learned to go to my favorite ramen spot, Marufuku Ramen. I have to go there on the most empty stomach possible. Because there there was a time recently where my uh, my friend Cole was visiting and we both went to Marufuku. And I we had just kind of eaten. I'd been like snacking all day. And we went to Marufuku and I always order the extra noodles. And I knew I shouldn't have done it this time, but I did it anyway. And we walked around Japantown, and I, I was like, I, I'm yeah, going to vomit really soon. I need to, like, not vomit because it's, I just eat, I had eaten so much food that I felt it, like, fucking in my throat. That's dude. gross. Um, oh, I hate and that. And luckily, l- you know, luckily I didn't vomit or whatever. I just walked it off and everything was fine. But now whenever I go there, it's like, all right, I, I can't eat for like seven hours prior to us going to this thing. Like no lunch. You're fast, you're fasting yeah. hard. Like it's yeah. like preparing yeah. for this giant meal. Yeah. Um, I, uh, what's up? I um I also broke that very early on and I ate a lot as well. But then I didn't really think about it growing up of that I had a I had a high metabolism and that's very much a Mr. Barrett gene mm-hmm. um, that he still has. Uh, but then eventually like it was right after high school that that left me. And so I kept eating how I usually eat. And man, it all went to shit, Nick. It's uh, it happens. happens. It really it, it <laughs> happens, man. It happens to the best of us. Like I, I often think that I was very fortunate to have been um, to have had those issues early on in life. Yeah, because I never knew what it was like to be like. I never really felt <clears throat> normal. Yeah, and so and I still don't to this day. But so when I started getting a little bit more fit, it, mm. I just really appreciate it. I think a lot more than the average person does. Yeah, because I think I think if you're just naturally skinny up until you're about your mid twenties or whatever, yep. you just don't have the perspective on it that I have. Exactly. And, and, and then I, you I, lose it very easily. So. But 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 you know you can always take obviously take steps to to get that yeah. back. And you just have to take a little pay a little more attention to yeah. to what you're putting in your body and stuff like that. But I can't know. leave a store without buying flaming hot fries. Like it's a it's a <laughs> Sickness. That might be a sickness. Yeah. It's a sickness. It's an like I can't like e- even I when you... I even when I've been here at work and I've been eating like salads for lunch and stuff and I'll go to see you ask me like, all right, I'm eating healthy, man. We're just gonna we're just gonna pick up what we need. I need some shampoo, I need this and that. Oh, back of fries, all right. <laughs> I'll just like toss it in the <laughs> you're like, I need, and uh, and your list the wa- says soap <laughs> and, <laughs> and then you end up with fifteen bags and of I'm hot on fries. The, and I'm on the walk home fucking opening the bag and like snacking on the way like, there. What am I doing, man? <laughs> like what am I Dude, I get it. Like and, and I've been in uh, uh a bad cycle up until this past like week where because that's the thing too is like I never realized how much my environment plays into my health Mm. until I started doing um, getting in sync with my wife as far as like hey let's I'll cook for you if you want to eat this specific way with me it would really help and once we sat down and had that conversation where um, where I was like hey I'll just make you like protein and veggies and this will be our meals for a while and that's where I find it to be incredibly helpful because I feel like I a have a partner in this and B I'm not enabled when I bring back a giant bag of Cheetos and we fucking snort those things like we're drug addicts. Yeah. Um, Cause I was eating Cheetos like every day for a good month there and I started wow. to pack on weight and I'm like, God damn it. I don't, I can't do this. And that's very, you guys know me. Like I'm like the annoying guy that orders the bunless burger and all this shit. And I just get, I, so I've noticed that it goes in cycles for me where it's like every couple months I'll go down a rabbit hole and then I'll have to pop right. back up and, you know, pay attention to it a little bit more. But yeah. again, I think that's because I just, I always look at my friends that have, were like super skinny when they when they when they were growing up and just have just don't give a shit anymore and I'm like yeah. how could you not care I you know. were so perfect dude on the walk home you were so I had beautiful something really like kind of well you look like you've lost weight by the way I don't want to talk about weight no on the walk home I had a uh, I was leaving CVS and I bought stuff do they just know you there when you walk in they're like hey Andy <laughs> and they just <laughs> no because the I, I normally go to Smart and Final Smart and Final is oh, okay. a little bit closer to us. Um, yeah, well, I know you're treating yourself like uh, when when I see you and you're like, oh, I'm going to CVS. I was like, oh man, it's a big day. No, I always go to CVS when I want to walk more. Oh, uh, okay. C- okay. My CVS days are where like it's a lo- much longer walk, and I know that I sat on that fucking chair and just either worked on graphics or just edited. I'm like, I need to like make my body move. Right. So on the, I I was leaving CVS one day, and there's a uh, a couple in front of me, and a guy has a little styrofoam thing <laughs> with some fries. Like I get he takeout. Like he left the restaurant and. Uh, he opened the styrofoam thing, 
drop all the fries on the street. Oh man! Right? And it, it was like it was like a fries like with the. Um, like with melted cheese and kind like of bacon chili and stuff. Cheese fry, like oh. Something like that. Yeah. yeah. So he dropped them all on the street and they're like, oh, fuck, whatever. And you just started eating them off the street? There was a very, there was a very young guy, maybe about Cool Greg's age, maybe like 20, Cool Greg Bear, like 23, 24, who then goes out to get the fries. And then I realized, like, oh, he's homeless. Yeah. Mm. And it just broke my heart because I'd never seen something quite like that. Obviously, there's a lot of homeless people in San Francisco and we always see people on the corner. And, you know, either begging for food or they're asleep or whatever, right? But this one, like, really <laughs> hit me kind of hard because it was such a young person uh, who went out to grab food that had just hit the street because right. he was hungry. And I'd never really... I had seen that, something quite like that yet. And it fucking just broke my heart. I gave him... I had two uh, boxes of cereal. And I gave them to him. But I just felt like... I, I don't know. It was that... It was like a different type of homeless that I'm used to. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah, it sucks, but you kind of just get used to like the older it, you, person, it, right? But it's also you don't see them like kind of in their moment to moment. Most of the time you're seeing them, it's like they're kind of in the like sitting on the street asking for money and all that stuff. Yeah. But you're never really seeing what their moment to moment lives are. Um, so that was kind of just like a very real yeah, uh, it, it thing fucking, that you saw. It happened right in front of me and it kind of like I had never seen something like that before to that level. And somebody's so young. Like I'm used to seeing Yeah, it's weird because I'm having like a weird reaction to your story because my touchstone for or like my experience with people who are super young are all the beggars in the upper hate who are just all like I don't, I don't want to, it's an overgeneralization, but it looks like a bunch of kids that don't need to be homeless, but are homeless because they just really like doing drugs and like being counter, quote unquote, counterculture. So, um, not to say that this person you saw was like that, but I've been annoyed by young homeless people before because I'm like, you guys are fucking clearly incredibly with it and could totally like you're just doing this because it's a thing that you do it's very weird no, yeah, there's versus, like, like versus there's a lot of like, and, and I think, and again, to dispel the belief like when I first got here I thought the homeless problem had had a lot to do with um, substance abuse which to a degree it does but I think now that I have a little more insight onto it I know that has a lot more to do with mental issues and mental health and so I think a lot of people that are homeless that's the hardest part about solving this problem is that there might not be a solution for what's wrong with them and why they can't fit into society and you can't it's hard to it's hard to take them off the streets and put them someplace where they can be taken care of um, so it's just it's it's a big problem here in San Francisco um, and it's, it's my understanding that there's a lot of laws that protect people from, you can't just as a cop, you can't go up to a homeless person, even if they're loitering and take them off the street. You can't do that. They have to want to come with you. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of, it's kind of ridiculous because, uh, I mean, I understand it cause it's their, it's their rights, but it's also a little bit ridiculous because you're like, they're not, this is not a healthy place for them to be. Like they could die of exposure. They could die of malnutrition. Whereas if you could just get them off the street, but like it's to the point where you can't even take their property. Even if they think something's their property, even if it's a piece of trash, you can't take it away from them. It's pretty crazy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What's up, Cool G? I think, about, I think we're going to wrap it up pretty yeah, soon yeah, yeah, yeah. on that very somber note. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Um, but guys, thanks for joining us. Uh, People sometimes like hearing the real stuff. Oh no, there are definitely I don't like, mind it at all. Yeah, some complaints that like uh, it's always just you know goofing off and talking about hating. Dicks about and about yeah, we talked about uh, you know. There's lots of crazy shit happening in the news. We we had uh, we had talked to Greg and I had talked about maybe bringing some more tougher topics into the podcast because that's what this is kind of supposed to be about. If you want pure shenanigans and probably, probably hitting just the best, the, if you want the best show on the internet, best internet, content just, you've ever seen in your life, just oh, okay. super fun, entertaining content. You can yeah. watch KFAF on Wednesdays. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of people are Shameless. saying that's the second coming of one JC Christ himself. That's yeah, right. Because there's right. a lot of times with like a lot of people, a lot of people coming to your defense. A lot of people coming to my defense on. Uh, of course ladies and gentlemen if you want to watch more of our great content out there you like this podcast you thought these are a lot of people i can get behind go ahead and subscribe to this channel uh if you're finding this over on soundcloud and you're listening to this hey you know what we have a youtube channel you can see our beautiful faces over on youtube.com slash kind of funny go subscribe to that uh if you're listening to this on soundcloud make sure you subscribe here and give us a little like um and uh you know if you guys like this a lot and you want to go into uh see a little extra of us every day we do a pre and post show for our patrons trends uh, over on patreon.com slash kind of funny you can back us there um, that comes with all sorts of cool fun perks including getting able to, to be a part of a better show uh, KFAF on Wednesdays uh, until next time it has been our absolute pleasure to serve you and you just got AF'd oh my gosh no, that's the wrong show our, our, now our show has ended <laughs> <laughs> so I wanted to use that from earlier today yeah.